What's going on, everybody? Captain Robert and a new crew here for Stormforge episode one. It's finally here! Ugh. It's just time. <laughs> finally. Ooh. How long have we been waiting for this day? A very Thank long you. time. You would have waited longer if I didn't introduce you, so you're welcome. <laughs> this is because of me. I take all the credit. <laughs> if you can trace the origins back all the way to that fateful tweet. <sighs> See? Yeah. It's true. I get stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all the lovely people that are stopping by for the first time because we're not in the middle of the night. Oh, I love all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And how about this art from Mike Pape that is just amazing? It's so good. It's incredible, the details. I've been like zooming in into it, looking at all the little bits of details mm -hmm. of characters. It's incredible. And I'm always finding something new, which is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys did a wonderful job of communicating your characters. And there there he is, Wing Buffet. Happy to see you. If you guys need oh, yeah, Wing Buffet. high end Thank you, character assets and you want to live your greatest fantasy dreams, there's your contact right there at Wing Buffet. Mm -hmm. Can't Too much love. Can't express it enough just how awesome that has been. Uh, super excited to be able to work on further projects. This has just been uh, an absolute dream. Not something I thought I would ever be involved with me in my entire life is growing up as someone that's just always been in love with fantasy illustration and a bar owner for all these years to think that uh, all of a sudden I would get to even have a cool page with folks and improv and all this. It is a wild, wild world. So thank you so much for everybody making this possible. It is fantastic. We have to introduce some new folks on the channel. We're gonna start with Drac for the first time here. Welcome, my friend. Yes, thanks for having me. Yeah, hi, I'm Drac or Draconics. Uh, I'm a TGPG for performer, producer. Honestly, anything TGPG I'm doing or will be doing soon. So just keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. Um, and I've been recently started watching uh, some Captain Robert um, campaigns, so I'm very excited to finally be in one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I came in. I came into the Meteorian Core campaign at the most <laughs> heartbreaking time. Literally, oh the Literally worst the episode. Worst time to come in, and I was like, "Yes, I want to be." He in. messaged me. He was like, "I don't know what was going on, but you made me cry." <laughs> yeah, I literally did. <laughs> we like all of our emotions here and that's here. how we hook them we just cry in their ears <laughs> i'm sad here come be sad with me <laughs> please trauma <laughs> bonding's real yeah, yeah. no it totally yeah. is also this entire do it. Don't to do it, but <laughs> campaign is a love letter to all of our uk fans that have stuck with us for so long in the absolute degen hours of the night uh only to be propped up with the Aussies who are just popping off. Uh, <laughs> they've given them energy. Uh, we tend to go a little bit late at night. I'm sorry, I've worked nights for 15 <laughs> years of my life. It's very difficult to not wake up when the sun goes down. I have full blackout curtains right now. I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> Playing D&D &D with sunlight is as bizarre to me as possible, so I've my my mood is completely set like it's uh nighttime i would know no other uh i do not have a gamer <laughs> rgb setup it needs to be very glow like old library setting for me i'm an old soul <laughs> fellas i can't handle all that <laughs> rgb <laughs> it's difficult with products in this industry <laughs> well, that's what's wrong with king rgb makes your computer go faster <laughs> mm. obviously of course <laughs> and it, uh, to download that ram we, we all know Sam, who's back for a second campaign. Welcome. <laughs> it is always... Don't worry, this character is potentially also sassy. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Who knows? I might be pulling your leg right now and you're falling for it. You're going to look so silly later. I'm, I'm just glad you have, a, you have a partner to torment. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be great. I love that for me. As a professional wife for the last twelve years, I know what to do. <laughs> well, I love that. As you can see, I got this. Resume, I've been I'm training. I've been in the industry for many years. Now. <laughs> I've been in the industry at its of um, wifey for twelve years. <laughs> Oh my god, Westwolf, it's 5.30 a.m. I'm sorry, now we've sent you on the reverse. It's your turn, Westwolf. <laughs> we, we know you're up. No, this, is, this, is, this is a problem. Westfall gives us all these good cards and things. We need <laughs> this is This is true. You know, I, the, the advantage to this, though, I just wake up and get to go do the show. I hate having to eat before D&D. &D. That lethargy that goes there, like... I don't like to eat before you perform or do anything, but it's like, yeah. it's very inappropriate to be drinking voodoo <laughs> yeah, Without like, anything. Yeah. Uh, That was the first two years of COVID where d and just kind of ended a little sloppy for about a year and a half <laughs> till we got our groove down. <laughs> Yes, welcoming another new t player to the table. Raven is joining us this time. Hello, friends. Ooh, Hi, ooh. I'm so glad to be here. And thank you, Sam, for uh, saying that you wanted to play with me again. Cause what? That was oh my gosh, fun. finally somebody and thanking me. Yeah. You're welcome, Raven. <laughs> of course. Oh my God. Um, yeah, this. no, I'm, oh my God. <laughs> I'm just, I'm really excited. Like this is new and I get to play a character type that I've never really played. I don't know everything about him and that's gonna be great. We're gonna figure it out together. Love it. I love it. And Ed, a forever DM, joining the table for the first time as well, finally getting to play. <laughs> Come, my friend. It's, well, usually I'm I'm the token UK uh, kind of <laughs> any given stream. And <laughs> we're, we're making up half. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, same. I'm usually the token UK player as well. <laughs> It's like whenever there's an awards ceremony with even like one like film nominated and the British press is just like, the British are coming, the British are coming. It's like, we aim, we, we don't, we don't need more. We don't need more. <laughs> so uh, on behalf of the entire UK, the three of us apologize. Uh, yeah. Mm, indeed, thank yep. you for making it a more UK friendly streaming time. <laughs> oh, yes. And I was going to thank you, Sam, but now it just feels like I might be copying Raven. So... Yeah, that's right. Oh, no, 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 no. Me. Go on. I don't uh, mind. I don't think you should. I'll, I'll message you later, but thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> and returning us once again in his favorite spot down below <laughs> next to chat. What is up, Mife? <laughs> I've, I've learned again how to uh, position so that I'm looking directly at you, chat. And I know that you're talking a bunch of shit. Yeah, it's, it's super great to be on a show. And uh, I will echo, uh, as the UK person who has been consistently on Meteorian Core and doing stuff, and I, 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 feel the, I feel the pain of knowing that I would never give up a chance to play in a session, but also that that means I'm awake at 2.30. So uh, on behalf of all of us from the UK, viewer and player, thank you so much, Robert. This is, uh, uh, you know, like, this is fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to the point at which this will be the, the show which I'm doing every week and looking forward to, and I'm not gonna have to ruin my sleep schedule for it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for doing that. You've seriously. been so fun to role play with. It has been a blast and I wouldn't give it up for a thing but this is just another thing that makes it so much better. And I'm so, so excited to jump in and play with a new group and with a whole new system and with everything. Like there is so much for everyone to learn in this. And I'm so excited to be on that journey, you know? And that's you a big that. thank you to all of you yeah. because if you guys didn't want to play and be here, you would not be here. These things are absolute labors of love. If anybody thinks that uh, we all set out to do this, uh, to 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 make a ton of cash, you are sorely mistaken. <laughs> we we run on tape and dreams over here, and sometime tinfoil. It it takes people wanting to come together on the most dirt leg of budgets to just get folks at the table and make something happen. So to each and every one of you that has made this happen, it is because your want and desire to create 
together at this table. From day one, I have told you over here, this is not my baby. It is our Frankenstein. So have fun with this. Manifest what you will. Stormforge is ours. The world of Fortara is ours. It is a truly community story building experience. So enjoy that and don't feel the confines of everyday society, IPs and things that we can't touch. This is our time to express ourselves in any way that we deem possible. And I can't express enough thank yous to Voodoo Ranger for making something like this happen and sponsoring me for another entire year so that we can do things like this. We can have the art and the assets. We can have budgets that assure that I make make sure that these folks uh, get their stipends that they deserve. So thank you, Voodoo. You guys are amazing. You've taken care of me since you paid my mortgage during COVID. So you guys have been absolute rock stars. And to Patrick and everybody at their team, thank you guys so much for being my rock. Check out Atomic Blood Orange Ale that just hit. But make sure. Drink responsibly, but live rangersly. Also, we got to thank our patrons that have covered so many maps. It's disgusting. Shabby, West Wolf, Aaliyah, Caleb, Monica, O3, Drewcom, Feisty, Kim, Nick, Nor Noble, Stokers. Thank you guys for all being in the $10 tier and above. You guys are rock stars and have enabled us to have such a high production value from day one. We cannot thank your contributions enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for everyone who loves to play stream loot, you will see it right over here. If I, oh no, this side, right here. These rolls, all this lovely stuff actually goes to pay our players and support our art budget. So if you enjoy helping the party along, we have a lovely thing to do so. They play across the screen. You guys get to roll some dice. You actually get modifiers for your time and support in the channel. You can go to the about section down below and you can actually see how you get your modifiers for your rolls. It all self calculates. It's beautiful. And you guys, it will actually whisper you in Twitch. If you have your whispers open, the cards that you receive. If you have those closed, you can see the stream loots log inside of discord and it lists all the different cards that get confirmed so this will be a learning process of keeping up with these but they will literally save our lives uh mm -hmm. and we'll go through uh about <laughs> adding them into your own hands so it looks like we already got some lovely ones coming through we got a an inspiration from toolkit let's go so i'm going to add our party hand in and set this bad boy up. Oh, have I not even done hands over here? Oh my god! I was just trying to draw mine, and uh, the answer is no. I look can't at, do it. Look at, yeah. look what, hand in the tool. I, I don't think I can see in the Discord. Ooh. Look, yeah. look what I forgot to do. Ooh. Well, um, <laughs> in the Discord, look above where the voice chat is, Drac. It says billboard. Click that, and then if it's a drop down, and then go all the way to the bottom, and just say stream loots log. Well, yeah. I forgot to build it out on it. our side, so we can't actually store it. So I will be going through this log while we play and making suggestions oh, on the cards Robert, that we can use. They don't have a role in your Discord to see the Streamlit's log. No, you know, hey, sometimes you forget to do all kinds of things. <laughs> you know, that is the story of my life. Honestly, yeah, it's amazing. Got you. You guys are going to love it, though, seriously. Uh, you will have this little back pocket of extra stuff that you can just pull out of nowhere. And uh, yeah, let really... you tell incredible stories. Yeah, I'm, there's literally a storytelling card called Mind's Eye, which has created some of my favorite content in all of the campaigns. Like it is Ooh, fantastic. Yeah. OK, but yeah. That, and also, it's Ooh. really nice to just be able to just chunk a bunch of extra damage into something occasionally using a card because, you know, that's nice. Yeah, and you ready to I use more luckies and inspirations ever in your life. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give all of my luck to Sam, I think, because I've played with Sam long enough. Maybe you need it. <laughs> See, no, that's what I need. <laughs> Don't rely on me. You know, that sounds like a husband actually. My wife <laughs> can do this. Um, she'll oh, remember yeah. for me. 
<laughs> let me let us be real for but a second though. You do not need it, Miss Four Nat Twenties in a single. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like that was a fluke in my entire D and D career because everybody at this table also knows that I rolled the worst ones. <laughs> like they're just not random ones; they are the worst yeah. ones. Yeah. Every single time in every campaign that I've been in with these people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now yeah. you guys can all um, see the roll log that's in here. Yes. I can all see right. That. So oh, we'll, look at that. That's fancy. We'll learn about these things as we go. I promise. Love that. <laughs> so anyone have big announcements they want to let the community know about that they're up to this week or beyond yes i am in case you still haven't heard well i'm gonna tell you so i'm no longer a full-time streamer because i am the uh live streaming fundraising and gaming specialist over at wounded warrior project and every single friday at 1 p.m pt or 4 p.m eastern me and my fellow co-host at wwp do what's called the weekly jam with jj and sam where we show you what programs and things are going on within either our internal community or things externally in the u.s and then we let them pick their favorite game and so far i'm an expert now at League of Legends, thanks to that. <laughs> I'm not an expert, but I never thought I'd play the game until two people were like, hey, let's play this, but let me tell you why. Let me tell you why they picked it. Because the incredible person who did pick this game actually lost his arm whenever he was in Afghanistan, and League of Legends is a point click and he's able to have a mouse that has a bunch of buttons on the side. So he went from being like a Halo controller player to this. So those are the kind of stories you'll get at twitch.tv slash Woody Warrior Project every Friday. That was a good chill, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. You know, I'm a corporate chill myself and I can tell you that that was really good. <laughs> oh. You just gotta like pat yourself on the back. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> Um, okay, somebody else has had before now. <laughs> I think I, was, I, was I, think I killed Robert. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'll shout out is that um, I am um, every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm over on. Um, well, I'm not over there. It's pre recorded so I can sleep. But over on um, Q Times at 8 p.m. Eastern, I'm in, a, uh, I'm in a pre recorded campaign called The Cases of Costa Vega, which is a detective show where me and my friend Caitlin play. Um, detectives um we're not official we don't have licenses but we solve crimes anyway um and it's a lot of fun if you like shows like monk or psych um anything like that that's the energy and vibe we go for with that many goofs and accidental murders that are solved um so check that out it's been a lot of fun i think we're on episode five there's gonna be a, five more episodes so you can watch the backlog and you can catch and they're all episodic so you don't need to, you don't need to watch them all if you don't want to you can just jump in um this week on sunday um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I I wouldn't usually go ahead and throw any of this into announcements, but you know what? I, I, I rewatched an episode way back when, and it's an episode where people at the very beginning shouted and be like, celebrate your dubs. Do it. It's, it's worth it. So uh, I want to say thank you, because uh, last week we wound down the last week of like daily Destiny content that I was doing on my channel for Lightfall, and... Uh, had a look at the analytics and it is it just beat out Witch Queen as the most successful month on the channel's history so thank Let's you go. so much for all the support. congrats yes. Yo. making making all of that stuff every day is is really tricky and the editor and I have been pushing really hard to make sure we could get that stuff out there so just thank you to everybody who came along and watched and helped and there will be more there will god there will be more I can't even talk about half the discussions I've had this week but there will be more <laughs> there is so much fun stuff that you guys are going to see in the channel at some point in the future but yeah it's gonna be good i'm gonna shout out a personal win i'm gonna do that because i'm feeling really good about it yeah i do it. don't have cancer yeah oh yeah how about that how about that that feels That's really a win, good baby <laughs> yes um, i had found uh, a breast lump and I was really concerned about it, and it was messing me up for a little while, and I finally went and got all the testing I needed. I do not have cancer. It is swollen lymph nodes, and I will take that. <laughs> I will take that. That is a huge win. So, that's all. <laughs> Hell yeah. The biggest collective pre-sigh ever of relief. <sighs> We're like, we don't even care about the show. Like, just like... <laughs> Awful. I'm so, so, so happy for you. Oh. 
I love y'all. Don't make there me cry already. Jesus, don't do that. Ew. There what are no... feelings? <laughs> <laughs> the stress of last month. <laughs> <laughs> there is no sigh of relief gift that uh, appropriately conveys the kind of... Well, yeah, the relief of that situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big There's yes. nothing good enough. <laughs> so, I think it's time for a little stage setting, shall we? As you all have known on the channel that have been with us for a while, all of the new campaigns are being set on the same timeline in different city states, in different parts of the world of Faltura that even the characters don't know. We're literally building this world out from the ground floor and piecing it together. But we are on the same timeline. So these players exist at the same time that the players in Marrow Strand exist. Just somewhere else. This somewhere else, located near a set of mountains in a floating city state called Stormforge. A place where science, magic, and man versus machine versus gods and mortals all combine. This is a floating city that was founded above a vast mountain range by a particular set of Dunvulcan dwarves. Previously inhabited the deepest mines within the mountain. For thousands of years, they carved out delicate ores from the land but legend has it when all ran dry and the reliance on divination and the clerics and the forge master no longer ran true. They were forced to pull all of their research into science, developing a machine that they called the Erzmater, a device that located precious metals with pinpoint accuracy. To the Dunvulcan's astonishment, this particular device led them north, all the way into the sky, headed into the clouds where they discovered Thundura. The ability to mine storm ore itself from the clouds. Hundreds of years later, now stands a floating city that is capped on top of the rolling clouds and thunderheads that run into that mountain range. Long left behind are the establishments left below. Only ruins remain. Flora and fauna at peak deadliness. An untamed wilderness of bandits in danger remain in the forest floor below. Now a city full of airships, full of academia, a distrust for divination and a distrust for those that are not innately gifted with magic. As in this world, it's better to apply to the sciences that you can learn than attempt to become a magic user when a sorcerer can already do so much more. A city that is turned upside down where the base inside the clouds is the most industrial zone to the middle to where the bourgeoisie the upper and middle class enjoy the cloud cover and the comfort of being situated between the two most stratified zones. Upper city leading to the least cloud cover, the most exposure to the sun. The poorest individuals and also the most trusting of divination stand in the glory of their son. Within this 
wild, wild new city-state. There exists still the same guilds that you've seen in Marostrand. There'll be different leaders. There'll still be the same overarching faction leaders that govern over these, but there'll be entirely new sets. There are wardens here that preserve the lands below. There will also be much more profiteers in this land than what you may have even seen in Marostrand with a largely ungoverned land below, there is ripe for opportunity and adventure. I need everyone to throw me a flat D20. Hmm. How do I do that? <laughs> At the very bottom right hand corner, there's a little dice box down there and you can just click a regular D20. There you go. Hmm. Second from the end. Gonna roll twice, my bad. <laughs> we'll take your first. Kaivar. No, it's me. Why am I listed as Kalisto? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, you uh, are. They're just attached at the hip. I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't be saying things, but yeah. You should be taking my name. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we do love a strong, independent woman. I'm just <laughs> you <laughs> have. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> you have claimed his character, so I, uh, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I did what? <laughs> It's okay. You should be able to roll, uh, roll your character now. Let's give it one more try. That's me. Looky there! <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> the official roll. And did I, you know, let's see, you know, while we're checking all these lovely things, uh, Ed, we will go ahead and get your character in here. Did I not put you in here? What a Ooh. shame. Well, character is Edward Spencer. I am <laughs> <laughs> one with the game. Yeah, been, <laughs> is this Ready Player One? Is that what this is? <laughs> we'll have to Edward add you in. Closet, Walter is wardrobe and ended up in Stormforge. It was <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad. You could do a little ghosty picture. But now when you roll, it should it should be correct. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Fantastic. But that does not change Kaivar with our low roll. Where would you like to be in the spectrum of this city? Would you like to be arriving, settled, or someplace else? Uh, most definitely arriving, uh, but probably not in the most um, usual fashions. You know, typically if you go to a city in the sky, you'd be thinking about a sky dock or something along those lines. In Kaival's instance, he's listening at the edge of a crate. He's inside the crate. And when he realizes that no one is there, he bursts out onto an empty dock, shakes his head a little bit, and then very quickly sort of like goes on his way, trying to avoid everything making sure that there's nobody around to witness the fact that he's totally not stowed away to get to wherever he's going next. First, I would like to have an athletics check on this crate. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. <laughs> here we go. First Ladies and gentlemen, check. if you've seen Meteorian Core, uh, some things, sadly, have not Don't changed. manifest things. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, there we oh. go. <laughs> what? Still have you not learned? Stop that! Know. Like Rita Repulsa, you free yourself from this pre loosened crate. It's Finally, fun. after a thousand Start years, it. I'm free! We're almost TPK! <laughs> Stop it! In, yeah, in all fairness, last time I did that, I did kind of like summon the BBDG of the campaign that same episode. So, like, yeah, no, I won't do that. 
Stop yeah. it. I need Kai you to roll a one starts running. D four. Oh no. That's a two. Two. Ranking the spots that you could be inside the city from one being upper city two and three being the sweet spot of the upper and middle class and four being the engineer's floor of inside the thunderhead with a two you have burst out of this crate on what is largely a very cosmopolitan neighborhood Opening up, you immediately sense and feel individuals and people around you. I need you to roll a stealth just so you can hunker in the box and get your surroundings. Fourteen. I'm going to roll a flat 20 on where you're at at the moment. You see two dwarves with large clipboards. <laughs> oh no. Manifesting through what looks essentially as if it's a steampunk UPS store. Largely set with a retail front, you're surrounded by boxes and crates. You can look and see the identifying tags of goods that have been shipped from all over the realm. As you can see them grumbling over the front and looking at manifest. Ugh. I'll get to the second half later. It's lunchtime. You see him head straight over and punch out as they leave and exit. And you hear that crisp chime of a doorbell I need you to roll a bardic lore mm, 27 there we go you have heard <laughs> of these small town shopkeeps and you find it adorable to know that they still keep these tiny bells to alert whenever individuals walk in and out something that you've never experienced and only read about it's adorable to find out that it's true standing up in your box go ahead and describe yourself as you exit the crate Kaivar is kind of something that you would think of if you thought of a sort of if a mantis was much more humanoid. Kaivar, however, has some very strange features. There is no easy way to say it other than the fact that Kaivar has his two long spindly legs, but also has four arms, two of which are much larger than the other two. And in those smaller two, which are much closer to his chest, as you would call it, there's some strange device that Kaivar is holding and always keeping it close, always keeping it very sheltered. Kaivar also has some long antennae and a bag with something on his shoulder that's kind of strapped into his chitin. Making his way very slowly through the warehouse, he's kind of going to creep towards the door. No one is inside the shop. It is only you, desk of manifests, and a whole lot of packages that need to go out by the end of day. Kaivar is going to see if he can sense anyone on the other side of the door. And then if there is no one, see if he can quietly slip out. Good news is there is a large glass front to this storefront, as well as some openings up on the door. So just uh, going through rolling a perception check. Uh, hold on. What? Why is it private? Nope, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> My apologies. Whatever reason, perception is the one that I'm having trouble finding. It is in the bottom left hand. 
Is that better? There we go. That's it. All right. 29. <laughs> Not only can you detect who's outside of the shop, but you can literally get a sense for the cadence in the pattern of city traffic that is going through at the moment since it is towards lunchtime. Uh, you can tell that people are on the move. Understanding that in most instances in a big cosmopolitan area, if you walk like you belong, people don't question it. Kaivar is going to do just that. He is going to walk out the door and start walking and just join the crowd and get away from the place that he's totally not just smuggled himself in through. The first time setting step inside of Stormforge. Have you been to a city this size before? Kaivar has never been to a city of this size. However, they do know that such cities exist. Cities in the clouds, cities in the sky, and cities with marvels of engineering, architecture, and culture. Kaivar has a vast knowledge of such things. It's not entirely all his. He's learned a lot, and he's here to learn a lot. But he does marvel at the fact that this is the first time he's seeing anything like this with his own eyes. For the first time, you can see the extravagance of the passenger-style zeppelins that are going and docking in and out, far separate from what loaded up in a crate and took you here. Seeing the architecture, this Art Deco style fused with a need and an absolute appetite to build north, far into the sky. Coming from your background, it's as if you've removed yourself from your hivish domicile and can see it all in the palm of your hand for once. Such a different experience. While you're strolling. Ed. Where would you like to position your character with inside the city. So, somewhere high above Stormforge, approaching slowly, there is an airship, and it is filled with a number of mercantile boxes and crates and a number of passengers who have been brought along in the skybound journey. But sat to one side, Sort of keeping himself to himself, there is a very thin, very tall, cat-like individual approaching, I would say, probably the upper echelons of Stormforge. Very deliberately alone. On this Zeppelin, it's been a crowded experience. Not the most expensive ticket that you could buy to get here by far but traveling alone has at least given you a bit of extra space folks a tad bit weary of a tapaxi like yourself has awarded you just a little bit extra breathing room that's got you here but now now that everyone's able to to be on top deck and breathe that fresh air. Staring out, you still can't see the city in its full glory. But as you slowly descend through the stratifying clouds, you can see the sheer size of the state of academia. Coming in towards the sheer sunlight as well that penetrates at the top level. It is a distinctive warmth on your skin that you haven't ever felt. 
it truly is a different experience up at the top. And you can see the architecture transitioning from an art deco style to much more shamble chic. It's a much cozier situation, not nearly as much land as down far below. You can see that every single inch is used here from hammocks that are draped down from the very tip tops of these small, almost completely vertical style apartments. You can see that anybody that gets around in this area has to be fit of some nature to exist. It's almost like a sprawling tree house. I need you to roll a 1d4 to see how far down your ticket will get you. Two. As you slowly pass through the amalgamation of Upper City. Descending down into crowded streets below precious cloud cover where you can feel the temperature immediately drop. It's like that first time you walk through a misting fan somewhere in the deep south and you felt the temperature go 15, 20 degrees colder instantly. The relief is palpable. There's a sigh that lets loose over the entire airship that they're no longer in the extremes. Now you can smell the food and the vendors even stronger at this cross point going from upper city towards the middle. There could be no better display of the various types of street vendors here. This would be the quintessential spot for street vendors is it is a mix on that line. And you can see people from the middle city actively gravitating and growing higher and higher up in the city to find those long lost bits of food and culture that they have disconnected from, from so long from the less fortunate striving and hustling above. I want you to roll a perception check. Oh no. And that's the first one. <laughs> and our Get first that one. Oh, one. Fairly on point. <clears throat> lost in the sauce and maybe it's in particular just the smells in this place you're absolutely captivated to the point you don't even realize that you've leaned over the rail so far enough you're falling I'm going to very quickly shoot my tail out instinctively and grab the nearest thing I possibly can. It's any consolation, this is very on par for a nat one perception <laughs> check. <laughs> I need a reflex save with disadvantage, so this will be keep lowest when you roll. Absolutely, okay. Mm. How do I... How do I do that? Uh... Just roll twice. In your, uh, I think if you hit the roll thing, it will come up with options. Um, oh, uh, I need to, uh, if you open up your, uh, let's see here, your character sheet. Yep. And now since you've got one baseline, you can just roll again. Okay. There we go. Oh, I see. I click on modifiers first. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> 23, DC 18. Oof. As you take and hook your tail in as you lean over and for a split second, your head passes through the clouds to the next level and you can see 
the thunderhead below and the lightning and the sheer base that this city is built on as it flashes through your eyes, your tail catching you bent over edge. I'm gonna pull myself back. Begin to inch your way back against the ship as you feel several hands reaching over to your shoulders, pulling you back up into the Zeppelin. I, as soon as I'm off, I just shrug them off. And as I do so, my red sleeves from my robe slip down to my elbows, revealing arms that stop at the wrists, bandaged with small tufty bits of yellow and orange fur peeking out. And I just very quickly shove everyone back and I, I'm fine, I'm fine. <sighs> and I just instinctively reach towards the two pendants that are around the white fur around my neck and just step back. As they stare back in astonishment, <sighs> So sorry. Uh, just wanted to help. Uh, You're fine. You're fine. Thank you very much. <clears throat> two what look like humanoid nobles stare back at you. It just extreme concern. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, I don't wish to be rude just hands you a small scroll and the two gentlemen walk away as if they've almost seen a ghost I just reach out with my tail and take it my bright green eyes framed by dark black fur just flicking after them as the pupils slowly begin to dilate a little I look down at the parchment in my tail. There's a seal, a crest of Stormforge on it, the hand of lightning, hand of hammer over anvil. Would I be familiar with it? You've seen the city seal before, but you've certainly never received anything with its wax seal on it. These two individuals, where have they gone? Roll a perception check. Twenty-five. You can see them mingling in between the crowd. They're roughly ten to fifteen people away in center mass of the crowd now looking around at the amount of people that surround me and severely uncomfortable by this throng of bodies I bring my wrists to the very heavy and almost poncho like purple scarf around my shoulders it is very warm with age and within it there are sigils sewn and there are a number of trinkets hanging from its frayed edges but I just bring it over my pointed lynx like ears covering my brow and I walk towards them. Excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> As you begin bumping through the crowd, you notice that you are not the only one with a small bit of parchment and seal. Everyone that you bump into has a small parchment and seal. I'm going to look down at it. And then just clumsily, but at the same time with a certain degree of grace, I'm going to break the seal off and just unroll it with my forearms as best I can, aided by my tail. It doesn't take you very long to see that this is a, a mass print. On top of that, it is a very, very simple 
mass produce scroll of Featherfall. And matter of fact, there's an entire jug of them sitting inside the center of this airship. You look down, you can see even the smallest of children are clutching their own feather fall, feather fall scrolls. I just shove it in my satchel and just huff my way forward. Welcome to the channel, Ed. <laughs> oh my god, that was so funny! <laughs> Do you, uh, you want to know the funniest thing about it? Um, I forgot I have Featherfall. <laughs> oh, even better. Oh my god. <laughs> you might have a free passing of it, you know? I was ready right. for, like, ghosts of his past, the, you know, the story right. lead that pulls us in <laughs> out to health and safety. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Sam. Where would you like to set yourself? And if this is a combination, please let me know. It will be. Yeah. So it um I don't know where you would keep like a market in this area. Where where would that be located? The best market would be where everyone else has been in uh, spot number two in between uh, upper and middle city. Can we be in spot number two? Absolutely. Beautiful. So with with all the hustle and bustle and things and people going about and potentially would I have caught sight or wind of this scroll or do I have one? Uh, yes, you have one. Everyone in the city is always um, encouraged to have multiple scrolls of Featherfall just in case the worst situations. No one has fallen to their peril in quite some time and it would be so so embarrassing to do so and to be that first person yeah imagine <laughs> oh man uh, i guess being handed this she would just kind of look at it and you cannot visually see them because she currently has like this very heavy and large but white and thick coat or like a cloak um and you could probably see like a little billow underneath it doesn't make sense there's no wind blowing but to her it would be because of her wings as she flutters them and just like crumples this paper in her hand um and pocketing it but you see her looking around for her husband and probably panicked a little bit, trying to go through and look at these stalls and reach over and see if she can find. Go ahead and intro yourself. Yeah. So I think you see, um, I think you hear him first. Just going, where did I put it? I just had it a second. Definitely had it a second ago. Cut it, didn't drop it somewhere. And I think you, as you walk through the crowd to find um, and follow this voice that you recognize, um, you see a a six foot one bordering six foot two um, black person with snow white hair in dreads, um, uh, thick, uh, a closely shaved beard, definitely trimmed and like shaped purposefully. Um, he has beautiful like Byzantine purple eyes with a shirt that uh, a button up shirt that matches with gold filigree and embroidery along it. Um, kind of simple charcoal grey pants and black leather boots um, with a long overcoat that also is black with um, golden filigree along it and he's just kind of like looking around the, on the floor for something like I definitely they just gave us a new set of those scrolls where did I hearing you 
thinking oh. out loud. And she she's not as tall. She's probably just very average height and more petite frame. Not frail, but very thin. And she has darker olive tan skin. And you could see a dusting of freckles, but they don't just stay on her face. You could probably see like little speckles and stuff from the peaks of her arms that are out, as well as uh, a fade from this skin tone to this like pale greenish blue, very um, sky reflecting and water like. And she is, is probably as light-footed as possible, like dodging past people. Um, hopefully not hitting anybody. <laughs> but give me a reflex save on that. I figured that could be fun. Uh, where is it? Middle? Where did it go? Bottom it left side. Yeah. Oh, something else came up. Oh, it just shows you your, like, modifiers for it. Yeah. Oh, boy. 15, actually. 15. You occasionally bump shoulders, but for the most part, you make pretty quick way. Okay. And if you were to actually look at her close enough, you would also probably be able to see these little small puffs of air that seem to dissipate as quickly as they appear, um, following behind her and also like laying down very far down her back. She's got very snow white hair as well that fades almost ombre-esque into the same sea foamy green blue color that are the same as her extremities. And she's got little baby's breath flowers in between her hair and braids just it just feels light and delightful and she likes the smell of it she likes to smell nice and so you could tell they're fresh they're definitely not wilted and they've been placed there today and she's going through this crowd and probably finally at least getting within a distance that she feels that you could hear her she, she's yelling through the crowd Galisto um, trying to get your attention I could like shoots up because i think i'd like just crouch down on the ground trying to find like i definitely dropped it yeah finally catching up to you and she's not out of breath at all she may have been like moving about but she has no wind lost it's just looking at you and crossing her arms a little bit a little disappointingly and you're not supposed to just go away yeah um sorry about that i dropped my scroll to Featherfall somewhere along the way here. And she's um, sticking into her satchel and it's very crumpled. You could tell she <laughs> was frustrated and she it has it balled up and then starts to just kind of pull it apart and <laughs> unwrinkle it a little bit and hands it to you. Yeah, you dropped it. He stands up and like brushes the dirt off his knees and like um, elbows and goes, Baby, you're a lifesaver. Thank you so much. Oh, of course. We do not want to be the first one to fall off of that. That would be really embarrassing to fall off of this uh, floating city, I don't think. Oh, okay. Okay. We had things to do today. We need to go to the market. Yes, we needed to find your ammo. Yes. I... Yes. I want to strap it to me this time. So I won't be dropping any... You should strap it to you every time, but... Fair, fair. I've been... Mum and I have been working on a little contraption for us to use that will make that less of a problem for Good. all of us. We definitely need it down below when we're dealing with some of those creatures. Well, you lead the way. I can't see. Everyone's taller. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and I'll take your hand and... She would take it too, and she would interlock her fingers with yours very lovingly. And I think when you, um, as a camera sees us do that, you see that um, Callisto's fingernails actually all painted, and all of the fingernails except for the index finger is painted the same color as um, as Lothia's eyes, whereas the finger, the pointer finger ones, are painted gold. Um, and on his left arm. And on his both his arms, you can see like almost like very faint veins of very light purple that seem to like like glow and then dim a bit and glow and dim a bit, just rhythmically, almost like with his heartbeat. 
um, but on his right arm, just peeking out from underneath the sleeve, you can see like bandage wraps that have been placed and they're fresh, but you can see that um, they're just peeking out just below the sleeves, but he takes Lafia's hand and starts making for the, um, I think, weapons shop um, where you can buy, we're going to go buy some ammo. Oh, please, it is a pleasure to see a couple like yourselves, three copper to truly show the devotion of your love as a man with a very darkwing dunk style purple trench coat extends his hands out and conjures just a small minor illusion that appeals to both the baby's breath greenish blue of uh uh, how do you pronounce your name again? La Lufia. Lufia and the purple in no. Callisto's La eyes. Lufia. <laughs> La Lufia. Lufa. Oh my god. <laughs> Making everything clean since 1985. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's pronounced fa. <laughs> That's actually l. 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 Oh, no, it's like you're being cut off. <laughs> <laughs> he extends out this small, probably at best guessed, three to four hour magical illusion of a, of a bouquet and uh, extending their hand out easily fingers sticking out of some gloves that are well worse for wear. You can see a scraggly uh, a, 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 just a, a very, very chin strap put together beard that comes down to gray. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit of a skullet action that's going down. The hair's long, grown past. You can't tell somewhere between a halfling and a gnome. Thank you, but um, I think we're good. Um, we actually have a fair amount of flowers back at home. What? <laughs> He's all forever in your mind's eye. Only three copper for an extended memory and then he produces a actual picture of you behind it within the minor illusion very very carnival-esque like it's 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 like the airbrush basics yeah i'm again i really appreciate it love your art style but i'm i think we're good i turn to but if he, uh, we're good, right? We don't... Would you like it? Does she feel pulled toward this? You said that since it appeals to her? Like, is it that significant? I don't... From the way it's described this, I think it's literally a picture of us, like, walking on the street or something like that. I don't okay. think it's anything. Yeah. It's literally a minor illusion of flowers and a very, very poorly designed couple's portrait. Um, as you ask this, and she's not showing any kind of expression across her face at this man, this dark winged duck. <laughs> she's just kind of staring blankly as if maybe isn't hearing anything, but she is. She's hearing all of it. And she won't respond verbally. She'll just keep staring at this guy and shake her head no. <gasps> Love is always so fleeting as he immediately switches over and transmutes to a small wiener dog. Look, look, see, <laughs> as he runs up to over to another small kid and begins walking this illusionary dog next to them, transitioning immediately off of you. Street vendoring here is a hustle. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, yeah, let's just not converse with any others who try to do that. I mean, I guess I was the one that's doing the conversing, so I would just remind myself not to do the, con the I mean, to be fair, I don't even know if it works for them. Why would it work for us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's head to the ammo shop. I'm running a Eat bit the way. Do you need anything along the way, actually? She, while they're still holding hands, she, like, uses a bit of like her magic around her fingertips you just feel like a cloud kind of envelop it like a hug and no i don't need anything else while you are marching forward to the next shop chrissy i need you to make a will save for lily oh. 
<laughs> okay. I don't like okay. that. Okay. <laughs> I think I know what's happening. No, oh, no. It's a 12. <laughs> Set upon the second city as well. Describe yourself in Lily as Lily begins darting towards this minor illusion of a wiener dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Lily is a corgi, um, and he has a white fur around the collar, um, a lot of the browns that cover the eyes, much like a mask. He's got a little bit of black at the, the tips, and he's got a uh, a weird pattern in his front paw on his arm that resembles a lily um, in a red, an off red uh, color. Um, and he is just tongue out, barking, like real excited, shaking his knot tail. <laughs> And he, as he starts barking towards this not wiener dog. And Chrissy is a refined little nine inch sprite. Okay. Not friendly, not friendly, not, not friendly. As Lily comes in sliding in to just bear tackle this poor wiener dog as the illusion just puffs. <sighs> it's gonna take all afternoon to reconjure that one. <laughs> well, maybe next time you won't be so silly to do that. Uh, talking dog. Oh my eyes, eyes up here. Look. Oh, hi. oh, oh, excuse, yes, oh, hi, oh my God. Oh, excuse me. I, my, my, my apologies. He reaches for a hat that isn't on his head anymore as he awkwardly goes for, for, for a bow. My apologies to insult anyone with fey lineages. My, excuse me. Yoke. Oh, okay. I guess, I guess we're good. This is, this is weird. This is weird. You ain't got no hat. Well, I, you don't I, have a hat. I did. I sold it. Earlier. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh. Lily, Lily, and I, I lean forward and like my silver eyes are just kind of like, I'm holding, there's not a, um, there's not a saddle on it on, on Lily's back. It's more of a blanket and there's a basket of libations. So I kind of just like crawl up on that basket and I, I peer over. And I look at Lily's one eye. Lily, we got to go. We got things to do today. No more chasing other dogs. No, we're not doing it. We have things to do. We'll get you some bacon. You love bacon. Lily was going in for a hardcore sniff of this dude's rotten boots, but the thought of bacon instantly. <laughs> There, good boy. Good boy. You're the best boy. You're so good. Immediately right, darts go. back into the crowd wherever that you might be headed. Just nimbly bimbly hopping about. So what I think that Chrissy would do is because this is like a bustling marketplace and he's a bit of an entertainer, he's finding like this little spot that he normally sets up at. Um... And it, it's just a bunch of like crates stacked on top of each other with a, a pet bed for Lily. And he would normally stand on Lily's back. Oh. As you find the perfect spot as always. There we go. We love that. Good job. Settling so, in, what do you typically perform during a lunchtime crowd such as this that is ripe with fresh customers? I tell fortunes. I am a fortune teller. May or may not be true. We don't discuss that, but I tell fortunes. 
And I think that I have enough of a clientele base that I have my regulars who expect me. Um, there's usually a bit of a crowd that forms because there's not many uh, sprites around. Um, so I will always kind of just brandish my wings. I like straighten out my dress. I fix the hair. I take the fingers. I lick them. I fix the eyebrows. And then there's a pair of golden translucent dragonfly like wings that just kind of pop out and flutter. All right. We're here. Now, everyone, and I'm sure nobody's listening to me because I'm very small, so I, I scream until Lily gets the cue, it's time to bark. Because, again, my screams don't really do much. It's a combination that you've never heard before, Kaivar, and it piques your interest. Kaivar is very curious at this and sort of slowly, gingerly wanders over and doesn't immediately look. He's kind of taking a look from behind various people's... You know, he's not that short, so he's kind of like ducking in between the crowd and whatnot. But Kaiva's about 5'4", so, you know, he's ducking from behind people's torsos and looking over in absolute amazement. Uh, and slowly but surely, he's inching closer, inching closer, inching closer, and then eventually is starting to kind of size everything up and is thinking, do I, do I, do, do I, what is this? Hmm. I, I should, I should find out. And so very, very gingerly, Kaivar walks up and with one of the larger arms gesticulates a bit of a wave like this. <laughs> Do you, do you accept the strong hand? I, I took the strong arm, child. <laughs> I do. I kind of, I look and then I, I, there's this weird regality, right? As, as the wings fold against the back and Chrysanthemum just kind of like finds his position on top of Lily's back in the sense that he's using one arm to prop himself up. His legs are kicked off to the side. He has now fixed his dress. He made sure that the V cut was looking good. Come on, you, come on. Seeing this and hearing uh, Chrysanthem talk for the first time, Kaivar will work his smaller hands uh, on the device that he's got there and holds up one of the bigger hands to his chest and one also like this as if to indicate terribly sorry could you wait for a second and slowly one hand starts whirring on one end of it grinding a small cog as it looks and the other starts inputting something in buttons and you don't hear Kaivar's voice coming out of his mouth you actually hear it coming out of this device in his hands instead Mm -hmm. Yes. What? What? What is it you do? Fascinating. How Have never seen warrior like you. Warrior? Oh, darling, not me. No, no, no. I am no warrior. I am what you would call an oracle. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do. Yes, yes. <gasps> what you is that? Magics. But you, warrior, and Kaivar is pointing at Lily. <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> Oh! Yes, mighty, fierce warrior. Well, I mean, if, if you mean that he's loud, yeah. Have seen many record across generation. This one is fierce, yes. Huh, I mean... <gasps> What, what this one Kaiva buy? Yes. Oh, 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 honey. Oh, honey. You, you are Oracle, yes? Give knowledge, yes? 
I kind of lean in. What do you want to know? We'll call this one on the house, I guess. Kaiva, search for much knowledge, yes. Knowledge of great warriors, yes. Great heroes, yes. Heroes like you and sort of points in the direction of both Chrysanthem and Lily. Heroes? I mean... That's the first time anybody has referred to me like that. I don't know how to take that. Yes, yes, Kaiva can see there is aura of greatness within you both. Chrissy kind of like straightens himself up and tucks his his legs under his 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 body and is now sitting on his knees, and he kind of just looks at Lily, then opens the basket while his his eye contact it refocuses on Kaivar, like very unstaring, a little shady, you know what I mean, a little shade. And I take out a very small, like a doll house glass and pour what looks like a red liquid from a bottle. And I just swirl it around for a second and I bring it to the nose. And then I take a sip. Wisdom saving throw. Perfect. Oh no. Okay, hold on. <laughs> so this will be your I... this will be your will saving throw. Bottom okay. left hand corner. I love having y'all experience Robert. This makes me <laughs> Seventeen. Ooh, that there. <laughs> A voice inside your head. I you wish, wish to know. know. Show them. Show them everything. Girl, what the? What am I supposed to show them? Kaivar wishes to see much knowledge. Yes. As you hear nothing, Kaivar, as Chrysanthemum's eyes go from white to that shade of green and almost marbleize in front of you. Kind One hand it. extended forward with a palm open. Before uh, interacting, Kaiva's just kind of like getting closer and taking a look with his eyes, rotating around Chrysanthemum, sort of seeing like, is what is going on, trying to assess the situation, and then gingerly reaches forward with one of his larger hands and just sort of touches the base of one of his claws into Chrysanthemum's hand. And seeing what he has to share. It's like being rocketed forward. Both of you experience this from sides. Chris, it's almost as if you're watching third party outside of your body. You can see yourself leading this creature along in a journey. I need you to roll three D6s. Chrysanthemum. Oi. Boy. Okay. All right. All right. I'll do it. Eight. Like a roll of bones, the pieces towards the middle congregate together, the three and the four split somewhere between the worst memories of your life and the best. Kaivar, what are you thinking about in your mind when this fortune teller has reached out to you. 
Kaivar is feeling something that is familiar and yet different. A presence within his mind is something he's very used to, but not something so singular and not something so distinct. And for Kaivar's perspective, not something so other. He's used to the overwhelming psychic noise in the background from where he's from. It's one of the only things that he remembers. And he also remembers the complete opposite, the total silence when not surrounded by his own people. The silence that he's also grown kind of accustomed to. And this is something in between, and it racks him right between the two and is a sort of uncanny valley between the experiences. It is honestly deeply unsettling and yet also deeply touching. There's a melancholy to it. Does Kaivar lean closer to the future or closer to the past in his mind? Kaivar leans closer to the future. Chris. You begin to guide this young babe in the woods from the literal plane that you're on down, falling at an incredible speed, a speed at which light can't even keep up. This is something that you become accustomed to when your oracle speaks. You don't always know when or why, but whenever the oracle speaks through you, it is profound. As you are jettisoned below, nowhere near the city, down through layers of rock, plunged back in terrain that is much, much more familiar to you. Kaivar, you see caverns. Much larger than anything from home. Much, much more unsettling. You see walls of lava. where tunnels that would normally end or go to different dens and spots. You see literal portals to worlds. Everything. Can Kaiba th- speak during any of this, by the way? Sorry. No, you were held simply as a passenger. I think during that part is when you see Chris just kind of like, there's an expression of, of solitude, but it, it's this beautiful, haunting visage of just nothingness and with within this space that they are held in um no one in the outside world can see but the wings start to elongate into these tenderly beautiful crystalline forms as there's this glow from this oracle who is now almost taken over completely, and he is just glowing white. As the command from that oracle speaks once more, there, there's this knowing, this understanding that he is just a tool in this moment. And so he rides that wave. You see the first arm pour through that wall. Long mantis claw of pure fire, ash, and magma. 
one comes across almost three times the size as the largest of your own kind. All walking through this portal that you clearly see through into a plane of fire. Kaivar, I need a will save from you. Staring into this visage, you can only hold on for yet mere moments. You get one perception check. Oh boy. Right. Oh, the 20 was there. Damn. <laughs> Just as quickly as you've gotten here, trying to take everything in. Hey, you're not ready. <laughs> Take him back. As you wish. And then this this small like ball of light just kind of implodes inward as as Chris, Chrissy like pulls him out and like just shakes it off like it's nothing. He retracts his hand and curls a finger around his chin and is kind of sizing up Kaivar at this point. Like that, that, that jovial energy that he had has dissipated. Excuse me, excuse me. Is that hand rests on your shoulder? Kaivar. Kaivar gets very startled and you don't actually hear any words coming out of him. You just hear some insect like clicks of. This is just like shocked, looks in your direction, totally out of it, like just pulled into this moment from mind's eye back into the real world. As you stare in to this orc's fiery eyes small actually not for you a very large golden eagle resting upon his shoulder as it cocks its head looking at you interestingly you've been out of it for a while my friend please shit as he has a pillow, is there a small peanut gallery around you? It's been close to 10 minutes that you've been gone. Uh, seeing the eagle, Kaivar is going to need to, to do some fright or flight things. And uh, Kaivar immediately uh, rushes away from the eagle and hides behind the stand where <laughs> Lily is taking guard and is just like nervously looking out from under the crate is trying to like see if the eagle is still there and then slowly fiddles with the device in his smaller hands uh, Kaivar Kaivar not warrior not no please no 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 you uh, have nothing to fear my friend Kaivar food of birds no you but are no food uh, of Parix. He pulls out a small satchel of what looks like dried meat and tosses one over the shoulder. You are no food of Parix. It's just uh, as quickly he's gone to check in on you. He looks over at Chris. Chris, are you okay? You, 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 you know, you know how I get sometimes. 
That's the um, longest yet. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna have to keep that one with me. I think. He leans over towards your ear. You know you need to charge double for that. <laughs> Chris is Chris is like, oh, you, you, you're too much. You're too much. No, but seriously, uh, Farouk, I think that something's happening. Things are moving. Oracle. Uh, Remember, the Oracle is but one perspective on a wild, wild world. Oh, yeah, no, uh, absolutely. About that, uh, I haven't seen anything like that before. Normally, you know, my little, my little face senses are tingling. This I think it's is important. most interesting. Yeah. I think we have a hot topic for happy hour today. <laughs> as long as they got the good whiskey, because I don't want the bad whiskey like last time. I'm not going to drink that, no, sir. I expect top dollar from this crowd. Perfect. Line them up. Let's go. And then I kind of like look over my shoulder at, at Kaivar. And I give him a knowing nod. It's gonna slowly like creep out from behind the crate. Hey. I got you. You're stuck with me for a little bit, okay? We're, we'll figure it out. Yes. Yes. Th th thank you. This this vision important. This this vision. And at that point, Kaivar seems to be completely distracted uh, and takes his two larger hands. And you can see there's sort of a strap that has gone across him. And he, he pulls out the book that's on his shoulder that is attached to him uh, and slowly starts to sort of rifle through its pages. And uh, uh, Chrissy, could you roll a perception check? I have Farouk too. And Lily and Parik, I guess, but they don't really, they won't get anything from this. But yeah, roll oh. perception check. Okay. Oh yeah, both of you easily. As uh, Kaivar opens the book, you can see that the pages and the uh, book itself almost looks as though it's made of the same chitin as Kaivar's own body. And, uh, as rifling through the pages continues, you can see that the book itself is actually another living creature. It's a little bit like you've seen a moth that is formed into a square, except everything that's going on with it is very interactive with Kaivar. And slowly, he finds the right page, holds the book flat in his two larger hands, and takes one of his smaller ones and reaches out and places it inside an empty page and a new wing-like material starts to suddenly form over it. The texture changes completely into the sort of transparent wing membrane that you'd see on an insect. Except you can start to see it's a little bit reflective of your own wings, Chrysanthem. You know, there are these flecks of gold, and it's a little bit like it's the memory of everything that's been going on, because at the edges you can see there's darkness, and it's almost like there's a tint of fire. And after sort of spending about 30 seconds doing this, Kaivar then gently closes the book with his two larger hands and slings the satchel-like attachment back over part of his carapace. You... you uh... Hmm. You know what? We, we ain't gonna talk about that. Mm -mm. We're not talking about that. That did not happen. And like, <laughs> Chrissy's wings kind of like they're they're already against his back, but they seem to like push up against it further. <laughs> As like there's a little shudder, and he looks back to to Farouk. Maybe whiskey now. Maybe whiskey now. <laughs> I couldn't have said it any better myself. 
as he passes you a small, uh, gourd uh, like capsule that is capped off with a thick cork up at the top as he gives it a simple swirl between handing it towards you. And he actually, as he does, casts just enough reduce to where it's an easy handhold for you. I take it in both my hands because it's probably, I would say it's probably about the size of my head, right? Let's, let's for flavor. So I have oh, it in yeah. both my hands and I just kind of like, I'm trying to be very graceful about this. And I like take a swig and I end up just like dowsing myself. <laughs> <laughs> this dress fuck <laughs> you know what it's fine it's fine it's been a day it's been a day clearly mouth wasn't enough i needed to soak myself in it it's fine as a snap of prestidigitation instantly restores yourself to your previous glory a smile across the feathered orc farouk Thank you. All right. Uh, you, uh, box having book with the wings fella. Uh, what, what is he, what is your name? As you ask that question, Callisto and Lilithia. Lilithia. Hit the nail on the head. It's okay. It'll be about three episodes before I get Lucia. No, no, no. I don't want to keep correcting y'all. I want you to figure it out. It'll make it great. <laughs> On your way towards the ammunition depot, I want you both to roll perspective or, or uh, perception checks. No, oh, okay. I was like, that's a new one. It well, let me roll mine. Click the, like grayed out for me. the little the dice. Um, oh, it should oh be yeah, it's grayed out. Uh, it's the one above that. that. Yeah, because you're looking at, I think you're looking the at initiative above. perception. Yeah, that's the oh, initiative. Okay. Oh, that's confusing. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, eagle eyes. Michigan, having disembarked successfully with your scroll. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> what has piqued your interest in the open market? I would say looking around, I, as I cast my deeply green eyes around my mangy and very, very kind of dirty and wiry fur waving in this climate I'm not entirely used to. I'm primarily looking around to see people who look at home, uh, specifically individuals who probably look as though they abide in the upper levels of Stormforge. Go ahead and roll a perception check. It is a comforting spot. Of all the markets you could be in, there are a good mix of uh, prim and popper. Without, you can tell there are working class, there are adventures, there are nobles that are walking around. There are academics from far below the city. There are even construction workers that are loading up with massive pull wagons of hot sandwiches, soups, and goods to head back down into the Thundura mines and see the clouds. I am going to head towards one of the, if there's a particularly gruff looking 
um, market staller. If I can find it. An intersection of paths. Callisto. Lophelia. <laughs> you see this bizarre tabaxi for the first time. Does he look so out of place to us? Total babe in the woods. It's one of those spinning around where they're looking almost in any direction. But they have a keen eye on their searching for something. Um, La Lufia is going to elbow Callisto very gently, but um, and just like jerk her head in the direction of this very strange looking figure. Oh, should we, should we help them? Mm. She's gonna think on that for a second. And do, is there anybody that else that's noticed Mishkin? Like, is anybody else looking in his direction or is he, are people bustling around paying no mind? Most people are bustling until they get very close and then it's a distraction. Mainly the children and their eyes that can't stop staring back and forth. Uh, most of the adults have enough couth to get one inspection and done, but the children are amazed at the sight that they see. I mean, I don't know if he's in danger. Looks fine to me. Say, seeing the children staring, I just drop my sleeves over my empty wrists and just fold them close to my body. I think seeing that, um, He'll kind of, um, Callisto will lean towards um, Lolly and say, yeah, I think you're right. You probably should help him out. Um, excuse mm. me. And I'll lead uh, again, still um, hand in hand with um, Lolly. I'll go over to, um, is it Mishkin? Just this, this direct, just making sure. Hey, Mishkin. I head over to Mishkin. This is back scene. She's falling a little bit behind you. Like, you're still holding hands, but she's a little yeah. behind. Hey, excuse me. Uh, no, thank you. I have already had a scroll, but you are very, very generous. <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. I wasn't going to offer you a scroll. Um, I'm glad you have it. It's very important to keep that on you. Don't want to fall off. Oh, I've heard. Yes. Um, are you lost? You seem kind of, kind of sticking out like a sore thumb here. Do you, do you need any directions? Any help? You notice at this a flash just briefly across his eyes before. And his eyes flick down, specifically to the veins on your arm. Strange and very obvious to one such as him. And he just looks up at you. I'm fine. Thank you. From where do you hail? Else... Well, I am from, um, I am from the north, traveling here, and there's a stranger, a visitor. Why? What brings you here? And Mishkin's eyes dart down to your hands. She follows your eyes. He looks back up. I am looking for an individual. <clears throat> Is that it? Unfortunately, yes. Stormforge is larger than I perhaps thought it would be. It is bustling. <clears throat> yes, and this is honestly one of the quieter days. Do you is not have right? a... Yes, actually, yeah. Um, do you not have a name? We've lived here for quite a while. Maybe we know the person or the establishment you might need to go to. We both. Mishkin. <clears throat> My name is Mishkin. 
My name is Callisto. Sorry, I should have actually opened up with that. Yes, Callisto. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mishkin. Lalufia. Lalufia. Callisto. I take it from your attire, but you are not from amongst them. And he just opens his arms a little, and now that they are unwrapped from around his torso, you see that what he wears is very, very weather-worn. It's almost like a large red poncho underneath this very mottled and threadbare scarf that looks like he's been wearing it for near to near to a hundred years um you can see that through the fur there are a number of different trinkets hanging from chains gold silver you see a couple of leather straps as well and you can see that across his chest there is a leather strap connected to a satchel and across this satchel and this strap there are small pouches and vials and you can see chicken legs and um, feathers, and you can see that stuffed into the satchel there are a number of dusty scrolls and a very, very large and a very warped looking leather book. His feet are bare, his paws wrapped in very, very rough bandages, and as he looks between you and him, I imagine you are probably not terribly well acquainted with the upper echelons of Stormforge from what little I have heard. I personally am not. Then I do not know how much help you will be, but I thank you for stopping a stranger in the street. <clears throat> Wait. What was your plan arriving here if you had no information? Well, you know, it's around several thousand people. That was your plan. Didn't say it was a good one. Mishkin, perception check. Would be, uh... Not good, a ten. <laughs> you are focused in on the conversation. Callisto. I can't do it. I literally can't do it. It's killing me. <laughs> oh, my God. I have to have the pronunciation right in front of me. Lalufia. Lalufia. Fuck me. <laughs> God. I cannot beat the Southerner Instead out of me. Instead of, like, La Lufa, uh, it's La Lufia. There you go. Just dab well, on it. I just Why look. The, the Southerner to me just looks at it, and I go, Louisville. <laughs> Louisville. <laughs> In, in what phonics? <laughs> Will a very broken education system. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. with here this La Lufa land anyway? <laughs> La Lufia and Callisto, please give me perception checks as well. Twenty-seven. No. What oh. did it just roll me? As no, that was me. I rolled it, I think. I love that you no, have I couples. Who do, who rolled what dice? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Here, I'll click mine again. Yeah. My Did it like gosh, take uh, both Drac of us? Drac time? is green. A nat no. 20. What do I see? Hey, oh, nat 20. There is a stronger presence of automatons that you have seen inside the market in some time. Knowing the structure between cloud marshals being an elite patrolling force with inside the city and the normal beat officers that you usually see in between the middle tiers of Stormforge Usually, the automatons are only towards upper city. And you can see an entire grid walking pattern 
of six of them coming from the end of the market. Her noticing this, and while Callisto and Michigan are having this back and forth for a minute, she's going to dart her eyes from that. Um, not look at Callisto, like you would feel her uh, grip a little tighter, like knowingly that she's trying to get your attention. And then looking at Mishkin, well, things just got much more interesting. You might want to follow us. As she just kind of pulls Callisto a town, uh, uh, like around without getting an answer and is leading to potentially somewhere a little more tucked in. Resist. Do I see what's drawn her attention? Yes, you can absolutely look. Does anything about these automatons seem or look familiar or bear any resemblance? Do you have a history with automatons? Um, I don't, but... Make her recall knowledge. Okay. Uh, let me just find that. <clears throat> I don't know if there's, that's a lack of... Where is that? proper stat. Uh, that's in your skills. It should be, at least. Sorry, I'm still Record getting used to the, the layout of this. Record knowledge is, like, can be any one of those stats if it's associated. So it could be, like, record knowledge acrobatics, and you're all acrobatics for that. Oh, okay. So it depends um, on the In this case, I want you to do a diplomacy. Diplomacy? Okay. It's a four. You're climbing up. It was literally a one, two, and a three. <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> Nothing familiar about these automatons other than the fact that they are walking in a grid pattern, and that can't be good. Looking at them, and then glancing to a small copper gear that rests against my chest, attached by a leather strap. I'm going to look at the two strangers moving ahead, their hands clasped as they move through the crowd, and I will follow. As you three begin to depart, Chris, Kaivar, Farouk, all perception checks. Ooh, Ooh 27. <laughs> Glad you're here, Raven. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> here I was feeling good about myself. <laughs> As immediately, Chris, you and Farouk look across. You see that, Chris? Yeah, I, uh, I see it. Looks like we'll have to take a rain check on that big money afternoon. Yep. Unfortunate. I do like money because money buys wine. And I am a lush. Anyway, moving on. Hide your goods now. Right, 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 right. Um, I actually like kind of start tucking some stuff away into the basket and I, you know, as I do, I just kind of like brush my dress off from, you know, what I, I just a, a, out of habit from like having spilled on, even though, you know, it's gone. And I fix my hair, I, you know, gently pat my ear, and I just look shady. I'm ready. Fringe. Farouk's gonna reach out a hand. <clears throat> yes. Parik shoots up into the sky, and he's offering it towards you. 
What? What? What is happening? Come. Now. Uh. Eh. Yes. Yes. K Kaiva will. Kaiva will go. And she can take that hand with one of his bigger arms. Pulls you back against where the rest of the vendors stand. As you can see, these automatons start flipping stalls and literally oh. clearing merchants out from the far side. As you can hear screams and the rush of people from that end, all beginning to flood in a almost human crush style formation. As you can see, it's far too many people that are inside this public market that can make it anywhere else out. And it's Farouk holds you over into the side as you just miss getting trampled desperately by this crowd. A calming presence falls over you. Farouk steps out in between that crowd. Seemingly knowing where to step and where not to. As you can see a small halo cuts and shines down from the sun up above. As you can see Parik coalescing and cutting that hole in the clouds up above. As this ray of sunlight comes down Farouk begins to dance. Cutting a swath in pattern through the people. You can see them all begin to slow down as they kind of take a look at this individual going in between. And what was a human crush begins to slow as they just take notice of this calming presence. But it mounts and it mounts. And Chris, you can see from the side that even this amount of people will be much for your friend. And that I... circle gets larger. If if I can, I want like I've I've seen this before. I'm assuming, um, and I can see that while there there is this effect, it needs to be broader. I would like to cast Elysian whimsy on Farouk to kind of help bolster him. Describe the spell. So, it says you overwhelm the target with an unexpected and unpredictable desire if it fails a will save. Uh, roll 1d1 or 1d4 to determine the spell's effect and there's, there's a list. Awesome. Ooh. So, I would ideally like to do this to help bolster him. Yes. Um, that's what I got. <laughs> Let's both make will saves. Okay. Nineteen. Twenty-three. Pick out a positive from that list. Perfect. Um... Give me just a second. I'm reading real quick. Um, mm -mm -mm. 
So I'm going to say that he is now also compelled to loudly sing um, the song that is affiliated with this dance to start really captivating and capturing the audience's attention, the people's attention. As he begins to bellow out within these crowds, you can hear a chorus of other voices from around the stalls, other individuals that come from Upper City as it coalesces in a kind of chorus that finally brings a stop to these people as Farouk looks back across with a big grin on his face over towards you, Chris. Just nod my head. Not again. And this time, as everyone is coalesced and gathered in this small circle that we've created between both of our magics. The automatons edging closer. Manawa, warrior of wildfire, protect us when we need you most. As he completes his dance and raises his hands, a visage of a fire humanoid raises up. Automatons rushing closer. Everyone will roll for initiative the start of next session as you will take control of the first of many protective warriors with Manawa, the warrior of fire, being in your control as your tank. Nani? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Robear campaign. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed your first one. Yeah. Ah, wait, are you already? <laughs> right, like it's over. No, we got more to do. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I to send for another Alice. So. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry that I did not send you guys on a break. I am so sorry. No, 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 this no. no. Good. Yeah, no, good. you're yeah. you're good. I peed. We're fine. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Since everyone's telling you you're good, I mean, like, you feel a little worse. Or do, do, do I have the times right? Am I right? Or are we? Do we still have another hour? I think we. I thought we, so. I don't know. I, yeah, I thought check. so. I thought we had another hour. I thought. We, we, had we had have another. Hour. Oh my god! I'm so excited. <laughs> Yes. Oh my god, I thought yeah, I had to stop at 4.30 hour. for every. Oh my god, let's go take a break. Let's go refill beverages. I'm so excited. Yes. Oh my god, yes. Oh, oh, oh my god, yes. Oh, this is great. He gave us the juke. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'll throw your camera back. Oh my god, I thought that was. Oh, oh, oh my god. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. I'm gonna make this a very quick break. break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna go grab a sna snicky snack. Yeah. A snicky snacky squirrel. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> just totally almost talked myself out of the last hour of the show <laughs> no big deal Thank you guys for joining us. It's been so much fun. 
love new campaigns so much. This is a good group. How are you feeling? I could sit and listen to you guys for hours, so. <laughs> Dude, everybody's uh, characters are fantastic. Bye, I was so excited to see your character just because we play such different characters. Oh, yeah. Your core. <laughs> so I, I like seeing the other dynamics of us. Mm, I love that your character keeps the take no bullshit energy from uh, Biddy, but channels it in an entirely different way. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's great. Still feeding out Callisto, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm like, how incompetent is he? <laughs> it's basically what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> You'll feel your character out. Like, even if you have a backstory and stuff, whenever you start, like, getting into your actual character over here, you'll feel how they play, because you have to get the gist of the other players as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I like him so game. far. Yeah. He's I'm, a great husband. Um, married couple. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. This is cool. But also, my character's like kind of a head empty kind of guy. <laughs> so. It's her type. Don't worry. <laughs> head full of air. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> it's okay. My other character's type is celestial, <laughs> or you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just not human. <laughs> celestial and two size brackets larger. Well, actually, that depends. <laughs> it's more Maybe like it's five. A very average size. Five oh, yeah. brackets larger. What? I mean, if what? she is not what she says she is, <laughs> she says she's average size, but <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> she is very tiny. Mm-hmm. Ah, Betty Duffoodle, the forever average-sized human. Forever average-sized. Hey, she embraces that average. Mm-hmm. I mean, she redefines what average, average is as well. That's, that's right. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I am so excited. Like, I, I, I'll say it again when Raven gets back, but like, holy shit, Robert, the scene that you helped craft with Raven and I, fuck, it's Why? incredible. Like, oh my that's fucking cool. God. It's going to be so cool expanding character stuff. Oracles oh, are, are a gift. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <See that>? <laughs> <laughs> the way you just open the door and like your full body appears in the background. <laughs> actually, everyone for everyone who's watching, it's not your door. Ed just appears. Like, yeah. just, like, Ed appears when he wants. He appears, puff of smoke appears. It's really weird. It's not a traditional door. It's a dimension door. Uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But like his hell through that. It's like all like <laughs> fire and lava. They're big like mouths, like limbs, just like. Oh man, Robert, I have so many questions that I know I can't <laughs> ask yet. I'm so, I'm so excited, dude. <laughs> it's like you pulled okay. shit out of my brain that I, I can't it. even Sorry. contemplate. There, there was great. Chili Mac. That's important for my livelihood, okay? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Incredibly important. Yeah, I mean, you, th you think these thighs grow themselves? Absolutely not. They require maintenance. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know why, but the idea of like homegrown thighs is just very amusing to me. Like <laughs> these are homegrown; they are organic, <laughs> free-range thighs. Yeah, organic, honey. All I can think about is the smell of chicken thighs in this market, and how much more I want to talk about the individual stalls of food before we oh. ever get to any plot. <laughs> Why? I mean, we could do introducing smell-o-vision. Oh. <laughs> smell-o-vision. Oh god, that would change oh my so gosh. many meters, and I don't know if I, that'll be for the better or for the worse. <laughs> <laughs> we got other story beats to get to. There'll be plenty of time for food, I promise you. There's so much time for food in Robert campaigns, and in all <laughs> manner of places and ways. I mean, damn. <laughs> we got food in the bunghole. Mm. What? Hold Excuse on. me? <laughs> there it is. You mean, I said what I meant. I meant what I said. A return of bunghole bunghole. Like groceries is what I'm hearing. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, the bunghole. It's got really great potatoes. Mm. <laughs> Damn, you're getting, 
potatoes out of bungholes? Wouldn't that <laughs> that's not the only thing I found in the bunghole. Yo, don't knock the bunghole till you try was it. There, was there corn? I just, I'm asking. Oh no. <laughs> corn! I love corn! There's also bugs. Ooh, don't like Many that. Buggies. You probably should clean your bunghole if there's bugs in there. <laughs> <laughs> We are adults. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad we brought more people into this joke. <laughs> Look, listen, everyone needs to know about the bunghole at some point. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the bunghole. It's a great place to visit. It's a great place to visit and meet Soup people. Soup salads. I was about to put my whole ass out there, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm just eating my food, mama business. I'm gonna, like, <laughs> that wording is very, very interesting with what we're talking about, right? <laughs> I'm just talking about, about the tavern. My, yeah, I'm going eat my food and mama business. What are y'all thinking you about, you nasties? <laughs> Nothing. Food, obviously. Look, they do great coupons. They they do great coupons for bun bun coupons. Oh my in the god. Hole. Is it like buy one get one free? Yeah, yeah they do a great bogo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the actual reason we ended up in the bunghole in the first place. Is a bogo coupon. <laughs> Wait till you get a coupon for the bunghole. Yeah. Oh my god. But coupon. You know what? No. Yep. A coupon. <laughs> <clears throat> You're gonna learn all of the terminology here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I said it uh, to the others earlier, but uh, again, Raven, holy shit, the scene was phenomenal. Like, holy so shit. So good. I am so excited to see where this goes so between everything. So good. Ah, it's going to be great. And I'm glad that, like, Chrissy and Farouk have, like, a thing, right? Where it's like, it's just they know each other. How they know each other, maybe we'll find out, but they know each other. Work on the same block, man. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah. We're a hey, we're we're I'm still Chrissy from the block. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or I love I Chrissy. I love you. Also, do you prefer Chris or Chrissy for their nickname? Good question. Either works. This is a good question. Mm. Either works. But don't call I'm him. I'm fine with Chris everything that Robert has called my character. Yeah. Um, um, How about it? <laughs> Don't call him Chrysanthemum unless you are trying to feed him, fuck him, or finance him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Chrysanthemum. <laughs> Chrysanthemum. Yes. Chrysamsum. Ooh. Chrysamsum. Oh, oh. She's on fire. <laughs> Watch out, Callista. <laughs> Hey man, Cliff is polyam. Uh <laughs> you thought she had one job. Part time comedian. All right, this is not this is not bad for uh, uh, on the spot. Let's go. Yeah, here we go. Joe. Oh, I remember this. This was on fire last time. <laughs> I was in trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> There's been lots of danger in Wait, this no, market. Wait, wife's in this campaign too. Don't give us this map. He's gonna make it on fire. <laughs> Wait, from what I'm understanding, is Bife like bad luck? Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, this was, this was, this was peak awful. Like, okay, Ed. There I were literally rolls you. for save Byron, or Byron, Xanran's um, Patuckus. Yeah. I need to, I need to let you know, Ed, the reason I brought up the Nat 1 perception check is because the reason I ended up here in police custody as the rogue of the group was because of a Nat 1 perception check. <laughs> well, I mean, my rolling thus far has uh, proved that this probably, I reckon Mishkin's general direction, I think. It's yeah. fine. I like it when y'all have those rolls. Keep them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just so you know, Nat One Perception, you you got off easy there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I uh, described a little bit before, how tanking will be involved in this campaign since we don't directly have one. You guys have control of Manawa, and Manawa is one of many different elemental spirits that can be summoned. Which typically will have to be uh, will have to be rolled. We won't know who will come out of the summons. There's actually a ceremony roll for it, oh. and it could be any uh, any of a handful of spirits with different personalities. I love that the baby angel. <laughs> You'll have to see. <laughs> Oh wait, that might make me act up. That might make La Lufia very <laughs> very not a like girl. So conflicted. <laughs> Hang on, maybe, I mean, maybe like don't I care. Said, 
<laughs> Cliff is polyam. So, I mean... <laughs> Hmm. Hey, me and Lilithia Lil like kind of like that. Doesn't vibe. sound like not permission. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my wife and I loved your vibe from across the bar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ever been to the nine levels of hell? <laughs> yes, I want to go back. <laughs> oh, Percy, come hit me up. <laughs> I mean, the city of Brass sometimes isn't that far from New Orleans, I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't you come after my Cajun heart like that? Oh. <laughs> there was, it was Johnny Stanton, I'm going to call him out right now, said there was no place in this world for bell peppers, and he hurt both of our Creole souls. I was like, you sweet summer child, you need somebody to cook for you right now. Mm, who hurt them? Uh, Johnny doesn't know how to eat. That's what I found what out. What death metal thought is that? <laughs> <laughs> Johnny about to find out what etouffee is the next time I see Johnny. That's <laughs> no, he ain't because I ain't making it for him. <laughs> <laughs> I would like everyone for their first time to roll for initiative. You can roll by clicking your dice up at the very top on the carousel, or you can roll through your character sheet. So Exciting. I want to ask a question, because I was going to do this, but we cut away. Um, I was going to begin to start within the crowd um, and split off to keep an eye out of what's going on. And I have an ability that let me, lets me roll stuff for my initiative. Can Absolutely, yes. Cool. <clears throat> Um, oh, Kaibar. We can roll off at some point, or it will just go off of whose decks is higher. I can't remember how it goes. So It'll be you, Kaibar, usually. Oh, wait, are we doing like the decimal points? Or no? this is, this I don't think the decimals are on here, but I, I, I'm going to add them when I get a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, to make things easy, what's your dexterity um, on Chrysanthem looking like Raven? Okay, let me tell you because I know that information. Uh, just kidding, because now there's a dice on it. Okay, it's 14. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm a 16, so it probably ends up with me going first. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's cool, because I'm short. I don't know if you know that. Hey. Yeah, stay at the bottom there. Unless you that got a one. pocket for me, you know? <laughs> Oof. These are a lot of first goers. Jeez. Uh. Robert, I want to remind you this is session one. Uh, so uh, by, <laughs> I can see my initiative and I'm just surrounded by <laughs> <laughs> soldiers. <laughs> Welcome. <clears throat> All right. Now, I'm going to look over here. We had so many cards thrown to us. This is now where they will come. Oh my God. You guys have sent so many cards. You guys are amazing. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot of party cards that we can't see. How do we acquire those? Yeah. Uh, as really quickly as well, in the roll log, everyone, I've reacted with um, the voodoo hype emote to the thing that starts our day on the roll log uh, over in Discord. So if you're looking for where our cards begin, yes. uh, it's mm. there. That's really good. Thank, you. Thank you. That's smart. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I the, what, normally I, I write something in there that says the start of the day, but thank you, Bife. I appreciate that. Uh, I got you. Yeah, so they either say uh, if it's been sent to you or if it's been tagged to the party. Right now, I'm just looking to see if there is a Relentless. Okay, there is a Relentless that has been sent to the party. Mission, would you like to reroll your initiative? Yes, I would. <laughs> Can't get worse, can it? Uh, yes. Relentless, it totally can. Oh, relentless <laughs> RNG is historically awful on the channel. It, it is historically awful, but <clears throat> yes, oh, box yeah. the trend. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I am going to mark that relentless. So I know when I uh, ultimately uh, take these down, I'm going to put a little burn by it that we have burned it. Burn. All right. Uh, we have another rule list to the party. Uh, if you would like it, Sam. No, I would like to stay toward the end. All right. I will roll it for Manawa then. Ooh. 
Yes. Hey. Let's go. Hey. Nat 20. Hey. Let's go. Wow. Wildfire Warrior, baby. Top of the sheet. So if you roll a Nat 20 on our, our, our initiative, you can either go first or you can choose to go wherever in the initiative that you would like. Double checking, see if there's any other 20s. Doesn't look um, like it. No, I think so one of the... No, okay, no They way. just rolled hot. Yeah, they just rolled really hot. Yeah, it was a 19, sorry. All right. Thank you guys for the relentless <laughs> All right, that one's from Tool. Someone's Thank you. Asking how they send cards. There you go. Yeah, it's just went loots. That's how you can send us cards, like you know, luckies and inspirations and stuff like that, and advantages. Because <laughs> we're gonna need it. <laughs> Drac, you had a question at the very begin during setup, something about on your character sheet, and I completely forgot about it. Oh yes, can you bump up my intimidation by one? Okay, intimidation uh, needs to go. Point. Yeah. Okay. It's the old. It's locked, so a play can't do it. All right, intimidation. I have the A A B P on it. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to. I um, I originally wanted to move it to deception, and then realized I couldn't do that. And after, um, because I just think players can't change it. I think it's locked to just GMs. And then, um, so when I tried to turn it back on for intimidation, it wouldn't work. Strange. So to yeah. You know, I've heard still faces there. come out in the rain when you're strange. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna sit here and eat all this chocolate if we don't start soon. Mm. Oh, chocolate sounds good. Mm. It's good, it's British chocolate. <gasps> Oh my god. Look, it's <laughs> Galaxy. Hey, 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 hey. Excellent choice. Won't let me add it either. We'll figure that out later. Wait. I'll just add it as like a circumstance. It's my last bag. I need more UK. Yeah, if you need to. Mm. Uh, this evening, that'll I'll be... have more on the way soon, I promise. I'm sorry, I've completely. Life is chaos. That's <laughs> my crack. <laughs> Never thought I'd like candy until I went to the UK. Y'all are the worst. <laughs> My dead is gonna get so mad. Candy is definitely better. <laughs> All right. I'm dead. I'm sorry, but also I'm not. First initiative in in the markets of Stormforge. Automaton guards are there. In honor of our connection, Chrissy. Where do you will Manawa first? Ooh. I am going to go for this guy right here, the one that is all the way to the, the you know, the, the that direction. This guy yeah. that just pinged? <laughs> yeah, how do you ping? All you um, gotta do is hold, hold down left. Click. Oh, there look you. at that. It's so fancy. It is. All right. Manawa will rush forward. Your will is my command, Chrysanthemum. As Manoa strides, leaving nothing but embers and ash back behind his trail. I will vanquish these foes. As a sword and shield emerges from outside of its fiery form, it will take its first melee strike. Oh, and because this was help, uh, our tanks can be three different levels when they are conjured. Because of our group conjuring, Manoa is in their elite form. Yes! Let's go. We'll take this first strike with advantage. Ooh, oh, damn. <clears throat> Remember to target. It's weird. I targeted. Oh, I selected. I didn't target. <laughs> 34. 34 will be a critical hit. Yes. As it is 10 over their AC. So you know their AC is 24. Oh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. Mono will do 33 points of fire damage. On the first swing. As it strikes across, not all of this clockwork soldier is complete metal. Is it's a steampunk amalgamation of technology. As you can see, fire actually staying upon in persistent damage. He will definitely attack again if you guys so wish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, second attack is good. All right, so it'll so. be minus four. So he strikes for a 17. This will be a plus 13 to hit. This will not be at advantage like the first was. Oh my God. Oh, oh no. There we go. Oh no, we got greedy. Dang. 20 to the one. <laughs> so I get to add the critical hit deck on it on the first one that was going through. Uh, let's see here. Oh, critical delayed wound. So it's going to take uh, double its fire damage, which is awesome. So it's going to take persistent on this round and at the start of its turn. And then Manoa is going to miss. Swinging his elemental so he cannot go prone will just lose his last action. An additional eight points of damage. Immediately swarmed that clockwork automaton heads over towards Manawa. It is gonna go in for a strike on the elemental. You see these large halberds that come out that cleave into the elemental. Gonna take 12 points of piercing damage. It's going to swing with its halberd a second time. Nineteen is gonna be a miss. Not a critical miss, but a miss. Looks back, adjusts, and it stops from swinging a third time. As it seems to be calculating. I will go ahead and tack these on so you guys can see, since they are not elites. You guys will be able to see the health before they hit 50%. So that's how Ooh. things go down in, in my world. If they were an elite enemy, their health is hidden. Some enemies you can bring down to 50% at bloody, and I will show you the 50% mark. Bosses will be withheld. End of their turn. Next clockwork will run towards Manawa, surrounding and flanking him. We'll miss by one. Let's go. Noise. We'll swing again. This time they will hit by five. 16 points of piercing damage. It will also calculate and hold its third attack. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. These things have a speed of... Isn't my... <laughs> it's this guy. Then you. Okay. Oh, yeah. You guys were both 28. I should have done Rolly. Sorry. Uh, oh, okay. That might be. Oh. So just a just a reminder, you were able to have your first set of movement for free. Then it will cost an action. So he used okay. 25 feet to get here, burned one action to double his movement. 
So he's going to swing with a map of minus five on Monawa. Yeah! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now one, let's see the fumble. This creature is already fatigued. E. Oh, cannot be fatigued. All right, in this case, and it can't be fatigued, Monowa will use a reaction to strike back as it misses, it counters, swings back around, and drops his sword. Oof. 24, yeah, 24 is it, just hits. Whew. This will do 15 points of fire damage. Oh my God, the fi the persistent fire is on everything? Oh my Lord. On like every uh -oh. single swing of that thing? Uh -oh. oh my God. Callisto, it is your turn. Callisto see, sees this fight break out and um, under his breath speaks into his necklace that hangs around his neck. The necklace is almost like a circular um, flat pendant with a with three spirals that you can only guess represent air and they glow a similar bluish green as again a uh, lot of fear's eyes. And under his breath he whispers I'm gonna go I'm going gonna go to the left and see if I can take out the one to the far back. And as he speaks into this necklace, Lodophia Lodif um, Lodif hears that in her mind as I dart um, across. And I'm going to use, um, I'm gonna use, so I get how much movement for free? Just my first movement is free, right? So if you extend out, you can see 25 is the green that's free. Then if you yeah. go a bit farther. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. I'll go. Oh, I need it. I don't. I don't have the right enabler where it breaks it down. I need to do that for this campaign. It'll change the color of it. Uh, but I believe okay. yours is. Callisto's speed is. Mine is twenty five. Twenty five. So yeah, if you use yeah. one, you can go fifty. And I'll move, um, that distance, and then with ten paces, my next action, I get to move another. I believe ten feet for free. Um, just yes. Gunslinger. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna move another ten feet, and I'm gonna pull my pistols out. So I reach in under my overcoat and pull out my pistols, and raise them up. And I'm gonna click, and then click oh no. again. Oh no! Click, <laughs> and then just very awkwardly just turn and go, babe. Um, <laughs> Do you have my backup? <laughs> <laughs> I will say initially, um, whenever Callisto did whisper to her or mentally like talk to her, if you would have looked over, you would see that the pendant that is around her neck as well in the shape of a, it's a mixed shape of water and fire, but the color purple glows from it as that happens. And then are you saying this part out loud? Yeah, I'm just out loud for everyone to hear. You you just hear, oh, Kali! And then she's grabbing into her bag, and it's not going to count as an action against me, right, Robert? It's going to no, be right. No, he can come back and get it. I will, <laughs> <laughs> I will have it as a lovingly uh, reaction that Callisto can use, so it doesn't okay, use up your she agency. Would, she would underhand throw it to him. And I think through the air, you see a kind of like... Um, Honestly, uh, I'm using this because I, I honestly cannot think of anything else. Almost like a a view the ranger can sized like black canister fly through the air, and Callista quickly grabs it and like uh, kind of clips it to his back. It was also kind of followed by like little bits of cloud, as if it yeah. was kind of carried. Almost like it was guiding it. Yeah. <laughs> and it just dissipates. Um, and I click it, clip it to my the back of my belt, and unhinge my pistols and almost like ram my pistols against it, and you see. Um, almost like a latch open up as bullets fall into it. Click it back and I'm gonna fire at 
this guy here. That guy right there. Um, yeah. Target. And I'm going to use paired shot, which lets me shoot twice um, with no penalty. Yeah. In one go, and it takes two actions. And also, um, I think I talked it. Because of my um, one of my feats, which is, oh, let me get up. Uh, da, 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 da. Surprise attack. Um, if I roll using stealth or deception for my initiative, any creature I go before is flat-footed against me. Um, so that creature that is going to be flat-footed against this attack as well. All right, um, I, I will. Turn that one. I will pull that condition up. Let me know when I should. Boom, it. you're ready to roll. Awesome. Um, is there anything else I can add to this? No. Okay, let's go. Yes! Let's go! <laughs> let's go! Um, I mean, that's my boo. Okay, so, um, so I fire the first shot. And the first shot was, what was that? The fearsome. Oh, perfect. I a fire. Um, it's going to deal oh my god <laughs> 38 points of damage yes um it is also stunned it's also it's frightened one now because of the fearsome <laughs> rune on my on that pistol um, i don't know if it can be frightened these are clockwise i guess if it's immune to that yeah but it'll be frightened one and it has to make a dc 21 fortitude save or be stunned one. Oh my god <laughs> They are not immune to being frightened. They have, they have enough programming to to be sitting in on that. Let's go. So a frightened one, and they need to make a fortitude save DC twenty one or be stunned. Let's go. Okay, first damage. <laughs> uh, was that the right one? Oh. Yes. It, uh, yep. Uh, yeah, it was. Okay. And then it will make fortitude save. Yeah, they make it. Um, but then also my second attack, which is just a hit, that deals um, nine points of damage. As again, my other one. Go ahead and roll damage. that second. After you first crit on that one, I am going to allow you to roll for advantage. If you crit on your first shot, being a pistol arrow, I want you to roll with advantage on the second shot. Oh, okay then. So let's roll one more time and just yep. take whichever the highest. Okay. Oh my god. Make it happen. Oh no. All right, it'll stand. Okay. Another nine points of piercing damage. And then I use my action again to from my, unhinge my pistols and use the ammo clip to my back and reload as I prepare myself for the next attack. All right, so you initially did, uh, this is another thing we do on ours. You will, uh, with that crit, you will avoid its resistance that it currently has to piercing damage. It will take all 38, so it's gonna take another five points of damage. With my pistol, actually, because of it has the property concussive, it goes, it, if it's resistant to piercing, it'll take it as bludgeoning instead. It, so it goes for whichever one is least oh, Dude, that's so, so cool. That matter anyway unless it's resistant to bludgeoning as well but then it'll go for whichever one it's got physical five on all of it <laughs> okay, <cool>. <laughs> <laughs> hey but you at least get the part from the crit that's so cool yeah. though oh i i think he did the damage to the wrong one i was, I was attacking this one up here yeah this yeah him oh hey uh yeah. let's go ahead and put 38 back on you little guy and then uh this also had plus four all right and then i'll take the frightened off and i'll take the flat footed off and put the flat footed on this guy That is a DTD on this guy. He's got 38 points. You have just enough. It'll do 
35 and then the plus four from the second shot. First DTD of the campaign. <laughs> Describe their demise, Drek. Yes, I think all of that swagger, he pulls his pistols out and then fight clicks and the embarrassment kind of sinks in. He calls for um, um, Lolly to set throw over his pack of ammo. And as he just, or very almost deathly, like, I think both the throw of the ammo from Lolly and the catch and the clip and the reload from Cliff, so, so practiced, you're probably wondering, like, he probably forgets his ammo often. Um, and this often happens. But when he um, reloads and then re um, um, points his guns at this um, clockwork soldier, it's almost like, Despite the embarrassment, the kind of awkwardness that happened moments ago, it all melts away and kind of this is his zone. Everyone, everything disappears, only him and this target, and he fires. And the, the, and the bolts, I think, I think they both hit the same points in the soldier, um, clockwork soldier, right in the forehead. You see only one bullet hole, but you know two bullet, bullets hit as it topples backwards and falls to the ground. Let's go! And I'll reload and that'll be the end of my turn. Oh man. I've been so excited looking at all y'all. I wasn't even thinking about what the fuck I was gonna do. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It. Oh no, it's gone! It's not on my list! <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll amend that quickly. Show me! Hashtag bless! Good answer, good answer! Woo! 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 <laughs> no. Woo! Woo! <laughs> family, fa no family feud. Okay. <laughs> so I'll, I do that all the time. Weaned on the family feud. <laughs> Weaned on the feud. <laughs> there we go. Aim me something that comes after pork. You pine. <laughs> <laughs> Still one of my favorite things I've ever seen in a family feud. <laughs> as Farouk is going to continue his performance in his Sundance, concentrating on keeping Manawa at full strength. You guys are gonna get a hashtag bless. It's gonna give you a plus one to your attack rolls, saving throws, attacks. And versus no, is that? No, that's my thing. We'll put those on area. Oh. our pets as well. And mono wall. Robert, does that need to be within the spells area, the emanation? No, we do sight. Cool. Awesome. Love it. Sight on Bane and Bless. Works the same. Hell yeah. Give us the strength. Son. And you pierce the clouds and rain fire upon our enemies. <laughs> End of Farouk's turn. Kaivar. So Kaivar has just seen, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just seen Callisto absolutely annihilate something. Has seen Manoa taking a bunch of swipes. Has seen this, you know, uh, this dance that Farouk is doing. Uh, and he realizes this is the reason that he's here. Mm. Yes, great warriors. Yes, yes. And uh, Kaivar is going to uh, move up uh, to right behind Farouk, because he's not quite happy to get in the line of fire, but you know, he's happy to be there. Um, uh, Kaivar is going to first focus, he sort of holds onto the Vox a little bit tighter, and uh, you see his eyes close, and every single one of you feels this wave of psychic confidence that emanates out from Kaivar's direction. 
everyone who feels this is going to be the effect of inspire courage. So much like Bless, you are actually going to get another plus one status bonus to your attack and damage rolls and saves against a fear effect. Let me see. That's Can gonna... you drag and drop it or do I need to as a GM? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I think it says let me play 60 foot. Let's try that. Does that work? Holy crap. Yeah, 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 yeah 60 yeah. foot I emanation. So yeah, uh, that is everybody gets another plus one to their attack and damage rolls. Huge. What? Oh my god. Yeah. All right. See if you can drag the drag that little part that says spell effect. See if you can drag that onto a character. Ooh, this is a good. This is a good shot. Let's try. Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, I will. I'm, yeah. I, I will do the missions. honors of dragging that inspire to everyone. No, oh, on my side, it just says place 60 foot M nation. Can you click that? Uh, yeah, that's what, uh, let me throw up the effect, that's but the, the actual yeah. throwing it on everyone's tokens as Robert's doing now is the oh, gotcha. thing above it saying spell effect, inspire courage. Also, the, uh, you guys all have a similar, that little sun pattern that is emanating from the front of Farouk's headdress. That is your mark of the blessing of the sun that's in front of you that gives you your bless. Anything mm. else, Kavar? Uh, yeah, um, seeing what just happened with uh, Callisto, he's gonna, um, after having opened his eyes back up again, he's gonna desperately scramble with the Vox, um, the little gadget in his smaller hands. You, human, a great warrior, one who, who with, uh, at least weapon, gun, uh, yes, huh? you, 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 yes. Me, yeah, um, kind of in the middle of something. Do you need anything? Yes, Are you lost as open. well, we found another lost person uh, earlier. <laughs> yes, yes, open your mind. And Kaivar is going to psychically reach out with one of his larger hands, uh, and you are going to feel this rush of energy flowing over you, uh, and you feel as though you could run even faster and you could shoot even quicker. I'm gonna cast haste on you. Oh! Well, Ufia sees this and is getting concerned. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put your hands on her, man, and she's gonna fight you. <laughs> whoa, whoa! I'm okay. Cool. Ooh. You sh you should now be quickened one, which means you get an additional action at the start of each round. Oh, that is perfect. Okay. Well, that just... happens. Show me, <laughs> show me the essence of warrior. Yes. Show me. Yeah, yeah, sure. here from Walufia. Just, are you okay? What's he doing? Um, I think he's in my head. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> we need to talk oh. about this later. Um, but I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Do okay. not distress, human. Yes, I am in your head, but I, I help. Yes, I, I, I here to observe you fight. Yes. Um, and I whispered onto the necklace again. I think it's here to watch us. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not I'm okay with an audience. <laughs> what, does that mean? what does it mean? I really don't know. Um, yeah, we still got four more to deal with, so um, uh, prepare. Okay. Kaival thinks that you're ignoring him, so he's gonna go again. And he's like, human, you can hear me. Yes, I know. I am in your head. <laughs> I am in your head, human. I, I, very sorry, but use speed. Yes, show me war. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I will show you my speed and show you war. Um, <laughs> Okay, hi, my name is Callisto, by the way. You're my friend, so we might as well introduce myself. Yes, <laughs> great warrior, Callisto. Name, Kaiva. Now, go, uh, uh, kill them. His name Bumble. Okay. Chris, it is your turn. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna have so much fun with this. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was hysterical. Okay, okay. Um... <sighs> Chris is a little like bothered by all of this, right? Like, yeah, you know, every Farouk is just cool, but Chris is bothered. Like, <laughs> I had things to do today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I, oop, I'm pressing things. How far away is this guy? Because they are not immune to fear. You said right. Hold on. Oh, uh, the one that was know. frightened is now dead. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, they're not the so, frightened. Yeah, I'm going to target this guy. So select targets. All right, cool. I am going to 
<laughs> I'm gonna cast Agonizing Despair um, against this guy, and as I do it, like what I'm going to say, like on the on the breath of this wind, as like my wings come out, and I like the silver in my eyes just radiates warmth, and like there is this this look of just disgust. And I pull out a small fan and I just start waving myself. And I say, you know, the person who created you thinks you're nothing but a number, right? And as I cast Agonizing Despair. So good. We'll save 21. I'm doing this with disadvantage for them. Oh, it just makes it by two. Ugh. Okay. So then I kind of just look at, down at Lily and I'm like, what? That was good, right? Like, it's not just me. That was a good diss. That was a good diss. I mean, they still take, they still take damage and are still frightened one from a success. They do. They do. Oh, yeah. I do have to roll damage for that, right? Yes. Okay. So they do take... 13 damage, but they are not frightened. No, they're frightened one. No, they're frightened, just... they're frightened one. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm reading things. <laughs> all learning. You're all good. I yeah, promise. The thing with Pathfinder is that even if they succeed, something still happens. Yep. Got it. Got Loves it, got that. it, got and it. These save and suck spells, kind of like the majority is not like that in Pathfinder. Okay. So then they take 13 points of damage, and I just kind of look down. I'm like, that should have that should have hit harder. Lily, I'm telling you, that was a good one. But it's your and turn. Then... Lily's like, <laughs> look at your leg, pointing, pointing, pointing. As you can see, it does more damage than you thought as heat metal does double damage <gasps> to these constructs. Oh. Not bad, Chrissy, not bad at all. And so then I'm going to, um, I can cast something else, right? Or no? Depends how many actions did that one take. That was two, so I have yep. one. Uh, you, you can, can drop a cantrip. Left. Okay. Um, let's see what can cantrips I have. So I don't... That'll have to be it, because I don't have a cantrip that's just one. That <laughs> uh, all cantrips are ones inside my game. Uh, okay. I just have to edit Perfect. it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, yes. So, so then, you always have, if spell doesn't work, you always have a chance to go, okay, I can do something. Okay. Um, then let's see. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> the choices. Yeah. No, there's nothing that I think is going to be good here. So I'm just, I'm done. I'm good. Uh, you're, uh, you can use your lance. I could, but I'm, my deity is neutral. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. It's only. Oh, well we, then, yeah. It, 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 in this, there is only those who oppose us. It is. Okay. Bi it, right. It's binary in that style damage. So you don't have to worry about trying to match uh, deity damage. All right, perfect. So then what I do from that point is I'm like, oh, fine. And I, I stand up and I just kind of like wave my hand and, and create this very simple, rudimentary, like golden spear. And I'm going to fling it at that same automaton. Let's go. Oh, uh, what did I do? Not the right thing. No, you what did right. You, so now, one. Now you could just click uh, uh, divine against evil. Okay. And you could make that lance could be anything. You could make it look. It doesn't even have to be a lance. It could be whatever your mind's desire is. So I think what it would look like is very simple, like this rudimentary thing, but like on the side of it, there is a set of um, 
like dragonfly wings and it has like in handwriting in Chrissy's handwriting like love Chrissy and like a lip like a little kiss mark on it I as he that. sends it <laughs> this will be uh, map minus five so map minus I'm sorry I did the wrong thing don't do that that's all right you did this did the damage early that's okay map minus five oh crap Ugh. well damn this divine lance will be just a bit over to the left as it sinks into the back of Manawa doing 11 damage to him or to them. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Crazy, what's your aim? As Farouk continues his dance and shakes his head. Alyssa like instinctually spins around thinking there's another threat and like <laughs> raises his guns in the direction of Chrissy and goes, oh, it's, it's Chrissy, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we live here. We've seen you around y the marketplace. Y'all well. have seen me. Everybody knows Chrissy. It's fine. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm dumb Never, sorry. never apologize. <laughs> Just my uh, warrior. Sprite? Never apologize. Only kill. Sprite? <laughs> oh, you wouldn't have heard her. She just said it like it to oh. herself. <laughs> Mishkin, it is your turn. So seeing the chaos in front of the him in the market square and seeing bits of uh, automatons flying everywhere, skittering across the cobblestones, Mishkin is just going to move forward. Um, uh, you left your hands behind. <laughs> <laughs> Take a strong <laughs> hands. Uh, <laughs> doing? <laughs> As um, what's uh, what's Lelufia doing at the moment? Uh, she's paying attention to Callisto and what's in front of him. So, sort of glancing between all the different uh, various colourful and eclectic characters all around, uh, he moves a little closer to you, Lelufia not entirely unaware of the corgi just off in the distance and his very horned <laughs> ears just sort of go back a little bit as he just and he walks oh. closer towards you Lelufia and you just hear a whisper um, over the din you seem to recognize what those were do you have history with them? I do, you want to talk now or do you want to wait till they're done? all I need to know is if they're imp impervious to anything like lightning would I know that? I would assume Sam would assume yes <laughs> but you uh it, both of you being inside the city yes I'm gonna say that you guys know that uh they can be affected by lightning or electricity if that's what you have to throw at them then do it that's all I need to know and with that you see two pendants just underneath his purple scarf just barely glimpsed underneath his mangy hair one on a silver chain with a silver crescent moon, and the other on an or, uh, on a golden chain, a matching designed sun. And they both glow a soft, acrid green as around his empty wrist, smoke begins to form, forming into the shape of two hands. And unlike the fur-covered body that you see before you, they are talons. Four-fingered, scaled hands covered in acrid green energy as he casts Mage Hand. And as he can do that as a free action the first time, he is going to move the rest of his movement. Uh, over to there. His hands. I can't control his hands. They will. They will go with them. I will. I will make sure that you get full control of your hands by next session. <laughs> <laughs> but as he rushes forward, he is going to pull out from his satchel what looks to be a small a lump of stone. It almost looks like meteoric rock, and he is going to cast at third level. Horizon Thunder Spear has a range of 60 feet, and I'm going to choose. You are now the owner of your hands. Woo! Thank you, everyone. What a joy! <laughs> so, I think I'm doing this right, so I'm going to cast 
Thunder Sphere. Uh, Thunder Sphere. Uh, Oh, I'm, I'm broken. Oh. Oh. You've turned oh, the color of your My, my screen decided. I think something Whoa. took over your, your webcam. What oh, no. Oh, hello. Greetings. <laughs> Turned into an Andy no, Warhol painting. Um, I have to do a refresh. Is that okay? Can I leave and come back? Yeah. Ping. Cool. So I rolled a 19, so I'm assuming that doesn't hit. Uh... Uh, which one did you target? I targeted this one. Why is it not? There we go. That one. Go ahead and just re-roll with the target. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so if you hover over and press T, it'll target the creature. So I've yeah, done that, and then... <gasps> Let's go! Oh <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not Sam leaving for the nat 20. <laughs> I'm still here. My camera just wasn't on. Okay. Yeah, I saw it. What and I'm also very mad because I was going to do that, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what do I press? On your spell, there'll be damage, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so you get to... <laughs> okay. All right. So this one on a critical. Oh my god, it's gonna take all the things. This is gonna be great. <laughs> it's an awesome spell name, by the way. <laughs> Resonant Thunder Sphere? Yeah. And it is weak to electric, so this will take it. Oh yeah, before I even add any of the other status effects, DTD. Describe its demise. You just shut this thing down. So you watch as with ghostly, acrid hands, Mishkin just brings out this small lump of a meteoric rock, and you see him holding it in his hand, just reach out the other towards the creature, and you see lightning begin to crackle around this bit of stone as it arcs between his, um, his hands, and it turns blue to a deeply unsettling green energy as it just shoots across and for a moment there is silence and then inside the creature's head you just see an explosion of electric energy just <laughs> out shattering metal and uh, gears all across the courtyard let's go also wait did you give damage to the other creatures that were within a 10 foot radius of that one. Oh my God. Yeah, it's that hits. Oh, wow. Okay. Ooh. So are you going to put it where it affects where it just hits these two? Or do you want to just drop? You want to do center mass? Uh, so I can only do that on the next turn that I, I hold it. I believe I can only do it on the second round. I think. I think that's right. Oh, yeah. T rounds. Uh, mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that's all I can do for now. Oh, oh that's Sick. such a cool two part to a spell. Oh, that's so cool. All right. Anything else for your turn? That is all I can do this turn. That's all three of my actions. So I'm just going to stay there, sort of underneath the shadow of the bridge, just pressing myself against the nearest wall. And. Lelufia, you can see that his furry white chest is heaving up and down. He looks quite focused, but also quite unsteady. All right, it's my turn. Lelufia, it is your turn. Sweet. Um, you said our first action is free, so I can just move. Uh, first movement is free. Mm -hmm. um, Sick. Uh, okay. You have 30 feet of movement, too, so you can move a bit further than most of us. Yeah. Um, seeing... First thing you cast this, and she she kind of smirks a little bit like that. That was kind of cute. And then she moves forward up next to you, seeing you breathing and kind of heaving a bit more. Um... Right next to your little mage. Look, we're just holding mage hands. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
She she runs up to you, uh, behind you for a second, and calling out, well, that was cute. And then she's going to actually cast, what is it called? Is it that one? Mm, hang on, I might change. No, we'll do it. Okay, she's actually going to cast Obscuring Mist. So you would see her as she comes up to you. She starts whirling her hand in the air, and there seems to be a thickness to it, like forming this cloud and darkening, almost like a rain cloud as it gets thicker and almost moisture-like. There's no moisture in it, but it just has that um, as if a rain cloud was kind of forming, and it keeps spreading and spreading and spreading, and within like 120 feet, it actually mists all of us within this cloud where creatures outside of it cannot see us Ooh. but we can see them and then once she does that she's also gonna cast her eyes in the thunder spear <laughs> um we'll say that sam didn't have that planned lufia was motivated by seeing mishkin <laughs> Good <laughs> <laughs> question. Him do I, that. Like, reaction right already? To catch what? the ammo? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. I just want to make sure. Unless it is under different rules from husbandly, you know, <laughs> catching. I don't know. <laughs> husbandly catching? <laughs> I don't know. Catching. You know, the very husbandly <laughs> thing to do, catch ammo. <laughs> Only because Robo made the distinction. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, she's going to target this one. And I <laughs> I wanna make it clear that this this sphere actually starts forming from within this mist that is before these creatures and so they they don't see it coming initially and then this sphere just bolts out toward them uh, oh how do you roll this is it just do you click on the first thing and click attack hover hover over the one you want to target and press t press t mm. there we go oh that's cool yeah And then, is that the right thing? Oh, 17 misses. Wait, I have an inspiration. Okay, so inspirations you have to add on at the beginning because they go one, two, and three oh. circumstance. So in this Can case- explain that then? That's different. We'll, we, will, we will redo the roll so you guys can get a fix for it. All right, so you want to add on what what size inspiration? I only have 1d10. Okay, 1d10. So go ahead and click the uh, attack roll again. Now there'll okay. be a little part that says circumstance. Uh, oh, yeah. And that is where you'll add in plus three. You should Ooh, also yeah, see, do you see your plus one for bless and your plus one for inspire courage? My bless one is off. Turn your bless yeah. one on. I can't. Yeah, because they're both. So we're um, Pathfinder. Two, oh, because they're both the same. So it's yeah, not a plus two. It's just it. Yeah, if they're both erases the, the other, other one. They don't stack. Okay. Uh. So like two status bonuses, regardless of where they come from, don't stack. But one status bonus and one circumstance bonus can stack. Julie okay, noted. so I'll yeah, have to okay. split that up because we will play that they stack. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> you have to do that okay. is basically. Yeah, so I guess you can just add it up into one big pile. So right now you're inspired, you're blessed, and it, uh, it'll be this. So it'll be a plus five circumstance. Oof. Okay, that's interesting. All right, well thirty. About a bing, that'll hit. Um. That's right. You guys get to t we get to test and figure this all out together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm I'm like looking through stuff and I'm like trying to figure some stuff out. I forgot that I have cool things. Twelve electric. All right. It does double the damage. Sweet. Um. 
So I, I, I get one more action, right? Just clarifying. Yes, you still have a one more action. Mm. How does this thing like water? How does your PC like water? <laughs> uh, you, you, knowing that it doesn't mix well with electricity, water's probably not its favorite either. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to <laughs> Michigan. You see her. She she once again, <clears throat> excuse me, starts like rolling her hand in a smaller form, and this starts forming an actual like little rain cloud, and she pushes it forward with her hands, and it pushes through this obscuring mist, and a little personal rain cloud just forms right over this guy, <laughs> and it f will follow him everywhere, <laughs> keeping him oh. constantly wet. So he does save. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> like Missy Elliott. Against my window. I can't stand the rain. <laughs> it dodges this time, but that cloud is still hovering. It's right there. It's like kind of circling around it. And that would end my turn. End of your turn. Seeing these machines drop, people running back, getting into a safe spot. There's a sigh of relief, at least, that people have gotten out of the main market and you seem to be getting things contained. And then from the clouds, you hear an unmistakable sound. I got the right button on the fourth time. Hey, Baca? <laughs> oh. Oh, no. As hot oil spills down onto the ground oh, as a clockwork <laughs> dragon <laughs> slams down into the end of the market. And that is where we will pick up next Wednesday. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't worry, everybody. Oh, We're dude. obscured. He can't see us. <laughs> She sees Mono. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, no, just a dragon. It's no, cool, that's it's fine. Cool. It's cool. Just a dragon. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Oh, that's no. It's no big deal, friends. It's just a dragon. It's just a dragon. You know. It's just a mechanic flesh wound. <laughs> Kaibar quietly poops himself. <laughs> no, I'm right behind you. Oh. Is judging you. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. That was so much fun, you guys. Was this this is gonna be great. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Also, Robert, Bife and I were almost certain that you would have Adam pop in at the end of this map again. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! It is I once more in a different portal. <laughs> we had our hands full. Not more cops. <laughs> Please, oh Kaivar is just a little doggy boy. Kaivar's <laughs> done nothing wrong. Kaivar didn't start the fires. <laughs> Bonus He's hour. He's already giving me a major Ketri image. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, I love it. You know, at the end, <laughs> after me harassing you guys for so long, me realizing that I was an hour short is really chef's kiss on my <laughs> internal DM timing. I'm like, 4.30, gonna be done, 4.30, gonna be done, 4.30, make, make logical story by 4.30, make logical story by 4.30, logical <laughs> things by 4.30. Oh my God, we got bonus time, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and it wound out perfectly, look at it. Yeah. I love it. I love how we all it ended up so center good. mass kind of on rolls. That was, oh. Yeah. I, I love that. I love just it's so good. Figuring mm. it out. Well, you threw me a bone there with adding that inspiration a second time. It's about, hey, it's about learning and figuring things out. Like, 
it's yeah. uh it, it's a it's a whole ass process so yeah we're, we're here for the we're here for the fucking story if you want to you want to see us roll 15 more times to get there we can do that too uh <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, I've got to ask this, because this, I feel, is uh, really pertinent uh, for every spellcaster in this group, which is like... All of us. All of us? us. Yeah, all like... It would be about me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everyone, ex <laughs> everyone except for Callisto. I'm an extension <laughs> of you. Yeah. Is concentration a thing? Because I can't see it in any of the descriptions of the spells. So, concentration is homemade on my side, and this mm -hmm. is how we do it. All right, and it hasn't got to come up yet because we don't have uh, a ton of casting over on the other side, which is kind of funny, but <laughs> it breaks down in this fashion. If you want to concentrate on two spells, I'll let you, but it's going to take part of your action to do so. Ooh. So in Pathfinder straight, that's what you can do. But what I do is I allow you to have a little bit more. So if you want to concentrate on two spells, I require an action the next turn. So it's just one. So it's just one action to concentrate. You can hold that. Instead of every little poignant thing, what we do is we story tell the concentration. Did you get hit with something that would cause you to lose it? So it's using common sense. Okay, a big damage hit, yes. You could possibly lose concentration from that. Getting pecked bits and pieces try to remind, oh, you took one damage to roll concentration. No, we don't do it. It becomes more thematic and more important then. So it needs to be a major effect that we would deem story-wise. So most of the time, major damage, being thrown around, losing your agency across the map, things like that will cause me to make that roll then. But you have a much stronger chance of uh, holding your concentration inside this game. Nice. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to buff the shit out of everybody. I just say that. <laughs> Dude, that's the most like menial point of D and D. It's so aggravating that it's balanced around that. You're like, ah, you're just. I'm so happy to be done with that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so happy. This is a lot of fun. I'm excited. It's gonna be so I'm great. I'm so excited. I'm so glad. Is it Wednesday yet? <laughs> Is it Wednesday yet? <laughs> oh, no, we... but tomorrow's Thursday. We two of us, three of us got more. More D D. More D D. Oh, yeah. I'm pumped. You I don't guys... know. That campaign makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we have dangerous things going on in that campaign. Wait, no, I have I have an angel on that one. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. My dragon's not scary enough? <laughs> No, it's not like Chewbacca. I know. I hit the, I hit, I hit the, I hit the, I hit the Brontosaurus <laughs> button first. <laughs> I don't know why I brought Calista so far up front. That was just very silly of me. And um, well, I mean, you are all the way up there, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason why I haven't kept my eyes off you. <laughs> Trouble. Trouble. You're up there getting as Jurassic soon as you Park. Running forward, I was like. You can do range. Where are you going? <laughs> I None of us are tanks. <laughs> I forgot how far my gun can shoot. Okay, I forgot. <sighs> Let it simply be known there is a reason that I am behind the druid. <laughs> and why we are hidden under. There's a reason why I'm behind the druid too. I am so excited <laughs> for you to meet small. all the tanks <laughs> and convince them to do your bidding. I'm so excited for this. Yeah, that's stuff. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be, <laughs> be so, so good. good. So good. <laughs> I'm too young to be a widow. <laughs> <laughs> it's hey. fine. I've got healing. It's cool. It's whatever. Connections were much better today. It was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you can actually make clips. Oh my god. <laughs> what is this like? <laughs> hey. But I'm really. Mm. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just gonna say I was really excited too because there's like we had the perfect like split down the middle of two regulars meeting a newcomer on either side and I thought that's great but also yeah. those two halves haven't completely interacted yet so like everybody still needs to meet everybody else and I'm really excited for that that's gonna be so much fun yeah, yeah the three of us don't know Kaivar for sure and then y'all yeah. don't know Mishkin we mm -hmm. each come with a newbie. Yeah, and <laughs> and into my head like what's happening. <laughs> yeah, and the rest of us have kind of maybe sort of just seen about 
ish. Yeah, no of each other. Not to say everyone knows Chrissy though. Chrissy is loud. We hear them all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, we so sometimes... avoid that part of the square. When when you're as small as me, sometimes you just have to oh, use bullhorn, okay? Because I gotta make my money, honey. You think these Absolutely. gowns pay for themselves? <laughs> Absolutely not. And this is why we would blow stone park. <laughs> Chrissy Quite taking Kaibar straight to scared stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that was so oh, funny. Good. I was like, dang, what is this little demon critter? <laughs> Huge lore drop first session. I love it. Yeah, that was I'm big. So, dude, I'm so excited to find out about what that shit was. <laughs> I am too, because like the way the way that it is at, currently, like Chrissy says that he's a fortune teller. He kind of is, right? But it's never up to him whether or not he is going to actually be able to tell the person the truth. So the fact that that came through oh. and was like, no, say this now, like bring him now, now, now. Chrissy's like, uh, all right, fine. Okay, girl, please like calm, calm to, like, I got this. <laughs> okay, and that, but that was big for, for like everything. That was just good. That was so good. Oh yeah. <laughs> I I'm cannot so wait excited. for you to have that constant inner monologue over a course of time where you take back more and more control from the Oracle as time goes. Like by far, probably my favorite thing out of reading Pathfinder possible is like, you get to have a very, very cool coming of age experience with an arc of this being. And it's not um, unlike a, warlock to patron deity there's a pathway to getting level here like yeah and i love that that's so I'm good so excited because like what's funny is chrissy is not a fighter at all chrissy will read you to filth he is not a fighter <laughs> and he's got the most health i don't understand how that happens <laughs> He's been dodging the most. Hidden, hidden. Probably. <laughs> you know, he's got like a string of like one night stands where like, Chrissy, why won't you call me back? And he's like, I gotta go. I got things to do. <laughs> Someday, you Chris will tank us knobs. through. He does like look through little keyholes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> gotta go fortune telling, but you are fortunate enough for me to tell you to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us, but we got to love you and leave you. Let these folks get back to the rest of their day and nights. Thank you guys for joining us for Storm Forge number yeah. one. We'll see you next Wednesday. Oh, so excited. Oh my God. Yeah.